where we left off last time. They were getting ready to fight who they've dubbed Cat Noir. <clears throat> so let's pick up where we left off. We were starting the turn order, and uh, I didn't change the name on it. I was just leaving the name of the uh, previous creature you, you defeated. But let's start with you entering the room. And I do believe outside of the door, having just killed the succubus, we have Proto and Vara standing in the doorway. So our friendly creature inside the room is going to step forward, his hands up, glowing. Are you the sacrifices? Let me check. <laughs> I'll lean back and... Do we have any sacrifices? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you might consider us differently, but uh, we'd just like to go home, if at all possible. Yeah. Oh, and I was supposed to roll, I think it, we made a note, and I already forgot about it. I think I had done an intimidate or persuasion check. Because mm -hmm. oh, you asked them right. to not fight. Yes. So go ahead and let's do that persuasion check. Eighteen. He's going to put his hands down and... Well, I have no reason to fight. Please, come in. And he is going to... <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. going to step off a bit to the side over here. I would like to beeline for this bloody book over here. <laughs> I will move forward to about here. And I will back up Proto. Quite generous of you to let us pass through. Of course. I notice you seem to be, and he kind of waves his hand in front of your eyes, you seem to be awake and aware. Am I not supposed to be? No. Usually people come in somewhat, shall we say, subdued. But that's, that's fine. Drin likes his food conscious. I have a question, Tam. Yes. I don't remember. I'm sure you described him beautifully last week, but I do not recall. What does this gentleman look like? <laughs> <laughs> he has uh, very cat-like features, except they look off. His face is a bit elongated, has very long flowing hair. His skin over his arms and what you can see exposed of his chest appears very drawn and gaunt, almost as though there's very little, if any, body fat. His fingers look a little bit uh, longer than usual, than you would expect. Not like a cat's paw, more like a cat's paw with uh, not quite tentacles, because they are jointed like fingers, but uh, definitely given a, a tentacly appearance. Hmm. Cool, thank you. You're very welcome. Where is Drin right now? I'm sorry? Um, tilting my head, uh, I'm just going to ask, where is Drin right now? In Zoriat, awaiting his return to this world. In victory, conquering all lands. Yes. Praise be. One moment, please. <laughs> I will shift around. Um, is everybody in the room yet or no? I have um, not walked into this room yet. Not yet. No. Um, 
I think if the turn order is gone, I'll walk. I'm gonna I'm gonna re-initiative since we stopped combat there for a moment at the uh, behest of Vara. Okay, I'll I'll just walk next to Tikaros and kind of peer in. I think the only thing I would really be able to see right now is the portal or whatever that pit is, and I'll just... Any sign of Prime in there? I'm peering as well. Can we see him? Give me a perception check. If you asked, I'll just... Yeah. I will just shake my head. Terrible three. Yep. Oh well, I didn't. I don't feel that bad then. <laughs> I got a four. <laughs> Good right. start. Good start. Uh, no, no sign of Prime. No sign that Prime has been here that you can see from where you're standing. While um while the team is in here, I'm gonna move down, to kind of just flank Vara. Okay. Vara, you'd moved over to that bloody book for some reason. Um, what are your intentions? Uh, what is it? Um, it appears to be a book. If you want to investigate it, um, are you just kind of looking at it? Or are you trying to pick it up? Or what are your plans? Um, I think I'm just looking at it for now. Okay. As you've noticed, there is blood on it. I'm going to bypass the investigation check. Uh, there's writing in it, but it's not any script you're familiar with. It almost, it almost looks like somebody were to take a quill and just draw squiggly lines across it. Hmm. But there is blood on it? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Can I do an arcana check on it? Does it seem ritualistic in some way? I think you're going to have to get a little closer to do that kind of investigation, so... Sure. I'm just trying to see. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Let's have that check. I'm doing this under the hope that Proto or anyone is, is talking with this person. I, I think that's absolutely them. the case. Great. Okay. <laughs> arcana... It's a 10. Uh, again, it's very hard to tell anything about it. Um, you are familiar with uh, the books like Warlocks or Wizards or such would keep that, you know, they tend to write things in their own script. But um, nothing that makes sense to you in it. Hmm. Okay. I would just stand by the um, table then and, and listen to what goes on. Okay. I'll speak to Cat Noir. Uh, and are there any Delkir currently on Eberron? Oh, you're familiar with the family. Quite. Did you serve in the war? A long time ago. Looking at you, you seem somewhat familiar. Were you... Ah. Dark? No. Valor? No. Aegis. You're an Aegis, aren't you? Yes. Hmm. Though not designate Aegis. Oh, of course not. You don't seem quite as refined. I'll reach, uh... As I have my hammer, uh, my shield in my hand, I'm, uh, I have my uh, hammer non-aggressively uh, behind my back, but I okay. am motioning like this, like so it's, my hammer's here and I'm motioning with my fingers to the rest of the party to get in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I, while I'm doing that, I will ask, how did the war end? Oh, horribly. Unfortunately, the hosts of Zoriat decided to forgo things at the time, but I think we're ready now to reinstate our place in this world. 
I wish you luck. Where is the door back to the rest of the world proper? And he points, oh, there's only one door from here. And he points to the large, sparkly, glowing hole in the floor. But it's more of an entrance than an exit. I'm going to move up and flank Proto. Would you mind? United front. Would you mind showing it to me? And I'm I'm making very robotic gestures, more so than I normally would. All right. He's going to take a step back and forward and go. Oh, please, come ahead. As I'm stepping uh, forward. I'm going to, again, behind my back, I'll flip the hammer around so it's behind. So it's a little less threatening with the hammer down. And I'm making a motion like pushing against my back and then pointing towards Cat Noir in front of Adrastus. Okay. This entrance and that she mentioned, that the other one made of iron go through it. Made of iron. Whom do you speak? Your underling, I suppose, said that our companion, the one made of iron, steel, whatever it is you would call it here, was led here to this room. Did he go through this entrance? Hmm. Oh. Please, come in closer, let, so you can all see the, this wonderful gateway over here. Um, uh, this was your friend, you say? I would like to ask the question here, standing here, if you don't mind. I do. You're in my home. You mind that I come in more, or not? No, I mind that you uh, feel that you should be the one to ask questions and not answer. I'm not necessarily answering anything. I just want to qu ask one question. If you don't feel the need to answer, then we will have to find other ways to continue this conversation. But it is something important that all of us would really be interested if you would so kindly answer. Oh, please tell me, what, what may I do for you? Your name, what is your name, sir? I'm just gonna stare at him for, for a little <laughs> bit longer and just go, I'd rather you answer that first question. Just the one. Well, of course. And he begins to move his hands back and forth. You see, the way that things work in here. And yes, we have visitors that come in. And as he does this, a pattern begins to form within the room. And I need all of you to make a uh, wisdom saving throw, please. Yikes. Don't forget our plus four from Proto. Yeah. All right. Oh, how far is it? How, how far is it? Have to be Proto. Yeah, you have to be within. Um, believe it's ten feet. Yes, ten feet. Uh, My plus four from Proto. Sorry. So yeah, address <laughs> Trust us, you're fine. You're good. Oh, I don't have a plus four either. Uh, no. you're too far oh, away. Yeah, I am think. too far. All right. I'm okay. Um, well, wisdom in that save. Case, wisdom. Wisdom save. Wisdom. Yes. In that Damn. case, sixteen. Okay. Five. I got an 18. Okay. 10. Also right. got a 10. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, 19. Thank you, Proto. Right. <laughs> and Proto? Uh, 17 plus 7. <laughs> okay. Um, Praz and Vara, um, you suddenly find yourself feeling, you know, he said, come closer. So you find yourself. Thing. You know, yes, I really do. 
I really want to look at that thing on the floor. It's very interesting to me. So if they... Because I've seen them, at least Kraz, under the effects of... Or Tikaros, sorry. Uh, under the effects of hypnosis. I said it too, didn't I? <laughs> under the effects of hypnosis before. If I see them starting to move in a way that is unnatural for them, I'm going to physically stop them. I don't know that it's unnatural. I would say they just, I mean, especially for Tikaros, who has- I was going to say, Tikaros would- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> What's going on over here? <laughs> what is what is this shiny thing? It looks beautiful. Um, uh, Regardless, so both of you. because Tikaros is chaos mode and I don't want Tikaros to jump in, I'm going to be like, <clears throat> Tikaros, and I'm going to come to here and just put my one good hand on Tikaros' shoulder. Like, let's let's take a step away. Pam, hey, is there anything interesting about the uh, the portal itself? Um, the, uh, the the looks like the marbleish uh, red base. Is there anything written there or scrawled? You are standing about fifteen to twenty feet away from it. I'm going to say that might not be close enough to do a good investigation. So give me an investigation check with disadvantage. Could I help him? Well, since I'm closer. Okay, so uh, a five. Uh, I guess that gives you a straight roll in this case. <laughs> since okay. uh, Adrastos is going to help. Then it's a 12. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's definitely made out of stone that comes from the, the northern mountain region, not something local to uh, Sharn. So this was definitely imported. Um, also, the exterior appears to be stone. The interior, while it does have a design to it, almost looks like it was drawn rather than exists. Ah, perfect. None of that matters. I am, go <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, and I say to him, I oh, that, this is interesting. Would you mind showing me this crudely drawn contraption? And I am trying to persuade him. All right. And what are you trying to persuade him to do exactly? To t to to approach the portal with me and explain the uh the circle. All right. Okay, I I've got a I got a 21. <laughs> I, oh. I get a plus 7 to persuasion. So it's like, "Oh, of course. Let me show you how it works." And he turns says a few words in deep speech, which are basically, um, O great Father Drin, conqueror of all things, feast upon this sacrifice. And is he, uh, so I'm saying show, and I'm motioning for him to show me. Is he approaching it with me? Uh, he doesn't move except for saying this, but at the time he says it, yeah, tentacles reach out from inside the portal and I am going to need dexterity saving throws from Vara, Tikaros, and Adrastos. Adrastos, okay. you still get plus four. <laughs> but Tam, why? I'm <laughs> bad at those. <laughs> 16 for Tikaros. All right, Tikaros, you are grappled. Oh. <laughs> 18? Vara is not. Nice. Adrastos is. If it's a 10-foot aura, surely it would catch both Adrastos and uh, Tikaros, right? So Tikaros should also get a plus four. You're just uh, really that? grasping for it there, Hyrax. Yeah, but it's... Technically, yep. yes. She's I'm not been grasping 10 feet. for anything. Go I'm for just stating facts. <laughs> I, I just I'm grabbed good. the ruler. <laughs> she is. Oh, so it, dirty 20. I'm then. grasping as the tentacles. It doesn't yeah. matter what bonuses sucker. I get if I roll a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, sorry, Tikaros, what was yours with the uh, plus four? Plus four makes it dirty 20. Oh, well, then you're, you're not. So it is simply a Drastos that is grappled. And uh, I think this is a good time to say roll initiative as yeah. a Drastos yeah. begins to be dragged towards the oh. 
him. I said it's okay, I, I'm glad it was me. I said you can't have any more bodily harm happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm getting drunk for it, all right, you're gonna have to take it up with Farah. <laughs> uh, I didn't click. Uh, are you able to add me? And I can add, I forgot to click on my token. I got a four because I'm mad. Uh, sure, Frodo, what, are what you is it? kidding me? Uh, I have a 16. What an Two nat ones in oh a row? My Jeez. Oh my goodness, <laughs> address us. I bow to your prowess. Oh, Whoa, I'm, like, <sighs> I'm like Will Wheaton out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I suppose with that, Irax, tentacles reach <laughs> out, they grasp Adrastos, begin dragging him towards the portal. What would you like to do? They sure do, and you know what? I don't like that kind of thing. So I'm going to take my javelin and throw it. Uh, I believe that to collect my gems. Do I have I picked them all back in? Good. Um, yeah, you've got uh, weapons. All right. Uh, so let's see. To, at what are you aiming, however? Uh, the tentacle grasping Adrastos, perhaps? All right. Very good. Um, so let me go ahead and roll attack number one. That is a dirty 20 to hit with. That is a hit. Four, unfortunately, minimum damage is four piercing damage. All right. Um, uh, extra attack, throw another javelin. Uh, this one is a 15 to hit. That hits. Okay, with that time, five piercing damage. All right. Um, and then I'm going to take my Gloom Stalker bonus action attack. Uh, and throw a third javelin, which is a 19 to hit That's with one okay with a total of 11 piercing damage the tentacle releases adrastos as it begins to writhe and what appears to be agony and the tentacles all pull back into the portal picking your javelins with them well that happens Something tells me we're supposed to end up in this portal. You know, like I'll make just, you more, just, brother. There's a lot of things that <laughs> <laughs> that are pointing towards the portal right now. Oh, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with taking a portal to Zoriat. Um, um oh. yep. I'm gonna run up. Uh... It sounds so inviting. I vacation in Zoriat. I don't want to go. <laughs> it's a very oh, magical right. place, like Tahiti. All right. Uh, Hyrax runs up to check on Adrastos. Are you okay. all right? I think so. And he puts his hand on her shoulder. Thank you. Of course. All right. With that, uh, Pat Noir, I just love that you keep calling him that. So I'm, I think that's going to be his nickname for me from now on. Oh, no. Pat Noir. I love it. It just works. So, and give me just a second because I am trying to. It works. It just works. <laughs> well, technically, at this point in time, his miraculous should be running out. So, he should leave and uh, hide his identity. That's what I learned from the cartoon. He is going to uh, change his tack at this point. Oh, I was and... hoping. <laughs> you did your best. Let's see. We've had. Uh... Rastos was the one who was touched, so I think that's who he's going to focus on here. That's not a nice thing to say about me, Tam. <laughs> well, Drew. you know. Uh, and uh, I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Okie dokie. Ah, you failed me, Franklin does. Nine. You suddenly find yourself terrified of this cat creature. You, when you look at him, you don't just see this cat-like creature. You see this cat-like creature 
with these fiery tentacles and large fangs and claws coming after you. And you were frightened. And I think your reaction would make you want to run away. Okay. I will run away then. All right. Use your speed. Uh, this is your reaction that you're going to be doing here. Uh, you would move as. Yep, there we go. I was going to say pick your direction and go. All right. Yep, that is 35 feet. All right. Proto. Uh, it really depends on if the DM is going to let me do this. Um, I'm going to pull my hammer out, swing it over, but I'm trying to use the head of the hammer to hook his neck and throw him towards the portal. You're going to attempt to throw him towards the portal. Yes. All right. Let's do this as an athletics check. All right. Uh, I, I will take it. 15 plus 7. You know, I watched Critical Role one night. <laughs> <laughs> you pick him up, hurl him towards the portal, and as oh. he reaches the Well, end, I'm hooking him. I'm hooking him with the hammer. Right, but you said you were going to hurl him, so you are oh, hurling yeah. him towards the portal as he gains right over the apex of the portal, just as he begins to fall in, a tentacle lashes out, grabs him, and drags him through. Um, that, that plays perfectly, because as I'm hooking him and starting to uh, throw him towards the portal, in deep speech, I'm going to sort of say what he did and said, oh, great one, your servant has lied to you. Take him back to madness. The portal bubbles for a moment, changes from this glowing red and yellow energy to black, inky spots that fall to the ground. And the portal closes. We didn't get our answers from him. You threw him through the portal, but we didn't get the answers, and the portal's closed. So we, we have no way of getting Prime. We cannot enter the portal. That's where Prime is. We have to rescue him. That's also where those tentacles came from. Zoriad is madness. Stepping through will cause great madness, I which leads that. to death. I also understand that. But if madness and death are as any lines that we can no longer cross because we are trying to save a brother, then what kind of family are we? We can find another way. What do you I'm know not, about Zoriat? Rochelle? I'm not... Um, I'm not the smartest, but war taught me you don't take the door your enemy wants you to. Tell us more about this Zoriat Proto. We are strangers in this place. You are not. It. I am not of Zoriat. Zoriat is... <clears throat> minds cannot comprehend what is in Zoriat. It brings madness. It brings death. It is the home of the Dalkir, Drin, the one we were to be sacrificed to. They started the war. And the war ended. The light won then. Um, the cat man said, and I'm pointing towards the portal. Um, said that they were ready to come back. So they must not have lost. Regrouping, maybe. Behind that door. So where are we supposed to get any sort of information now? 
I said to leave the succubus alive. The succubus is... And I just look over, probably with head smashed in. It's like... No, no. I did not kill the succubus. Yeah. Whatever happened, she's not alive. That Ferdo did not kill. No, I understand that. The portal is gone. Along with whoever we were supposed to at least try to get some sort of information from. Drin is the most powerful of the Dale Care. We would not have gotten answers. We may not even have beaten. Might not even have hurt. I don't think it was the smartest idea to deal with the portal by jumping in or whatnot, but at the same time, our most direct way is closed. Let's get back out to the other side, open the door, and see where we go from here. We may be able to escape, but if we can't, if we can't rescue Prime, We find another way. We'll find a way, Ptolemaeus. There's other portals. To the same place. Dealing with the same people. Correct? Portals can be open to many planes, yes. I I would say let's not waste time, but as soon as we get out of here, as soon as we get somewhere safe, we need a little bit of rest. Um, Adrasus is going to go look at this wall. What is this? That is a door, very similar to the other doors you have seen, made out of the same metal. The closest door that you've seen that would approximate to it is the one that had the bar across it. This one has no bar on it, however. Olimaeus, what do you make of this? Try it. I assume that there's a bar that locks it from the other side. I was about to put both hands on it and realize I don't have them, so... (laughs) (laughs) One hand. Push up on the door. The door... Or attempt. The door slides to the left. Okay. So I'll start to slide it, and then... <clears throat> Proto, could you give me a hand, please? Uh, I will head over and use my strength to assist in uh, getting the door open. All right. And you are able to slide the door open. Drastos will chuckle to himself at the irony of his verbiage and then uh, check through the door. And I am going to fight with uh, roll 20 for a few seconds here. Uh, roll initiative, please. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. um, while, that's, while we're opening the door, I will ask uh, Adrastos, do we want to search the room for anything before we go? I think we have some friends we need to deal with first. You say that, and you see Tigaras has moved over to the book that Vara was looking at, and she's going to pick it up and say to Vara, did it look like magic? If it's magic, we can take it for Prime and give it to him when we rescue him. He'll love it. It didn't really look like much of anything, to be honest. I didn't get any kind of arcane reading off of it. It just looks like scribbles. Um, But it's bloody, so that's interesting. Tikaros. If anyone would know more about it, it would potentially be him. Tikaros, as you reach for the book, Oof. please make a dexterity saving. <laughs> oh, no. Got this, Tikaros. Yeah, that's an eight. You reach for the book, and suddenly the ink on the page, mixed with kind of the blood together, pulls up comes forward as a giant mouth, a little bit larger than the size of your hand, and uh, takes a bite out of it. And that is going to be two piercing damage. Ouch! I exclaim loudly. 
I assume that means you shouldn't touch it then. And there's this little creature like, like an ink blot on top of the book. That what the heck is that thing? Holy. Well, it bit me, so I want to burn it with fire. Or do you think we do with these ourselves? Sorry, Proto, mute. it seems like your vocal unit is off. Reactivated. Uh, <laughs> uh, but possibly, though, my audio receptors heard that Tikaros was bit? Uh, yes, my book. Ink. Hmm. Does it look like I could stab it? It uh, looks like a big ink block about that big, so. Mm -hmm. What? Does anybody know what this is? It bit me. Mm. I'm going to take a look at it. Um, does it look like it's actively hostile? Um, well, it just bit Tikaros, so yes. <laughs> yeah, but it might just be protective of the book. It it definitely uh, what it has for eyes, which are basically two pits in the uh, the ink blot. Uh, they're definitely keeping an eye on what you're doing. I'm gonna try and talk to it. Um, okay. Can you speak? Can you understand okay. what I'm saying to you? And it's gonna go, nod its head, nod its bulbousness. Okay, but it doesn't respond verbally. No, it does not. Hmm. Is there any way we could persuade you to let us look at that book? And it goes. That's a no, then. Hmm. Uh, he looks down at Tikaros. Are you all right? Yeah, it's just a bit of flesh wound. How important is it that we look into this book? Well, I think it's pretty important. What if I just close it up and take it? I don't, I don't think, think we should take it. Can somebody, like, get rid of this magic -y ink blot that's on here? Do you want me to try to speak to it? You're on sure. the other side of the room, though. So. <laughs> I, I can walk. I have legs. I see, well, you and oh. addressed us were in a conversation, so I don't know if you're listening to this one or the other one. That's why I'm throwing that out. Oh, I, I made it aware I am because I heard okay. that behind me. I yeah. think she was bit. Cool. Um, so uh, I will approach, and I'll stand uh, next to Tikaros, and in deep speech, I'll say, what are you? Yeah. Um. Does a twenty-one hit? Oh. A twenty-one will hit. <laughs> it it <laughs> raises back and goes and launches a splash of ink towards your face. And uh, that's rude. Ah, uh, yeah, you know that's going to hit. And I need a dexterity saving throw, please, and I'll give you your damage in just a moment. Oh my goodness! That'll be a sixteen. That is one poison damage, and uh, you're blinded. Jeez. As this stuff covers your visual um, receptors. I am, res uh, yeah, so I'm um, only resistant to poison damage, so it doesn't really do anything. Okay, okay. it does cover uh, your vision, so. Oh, man, there's obviously secrets in here. Look how hot it's trying to protect itself. Mm. If it's we... not the right secrets that we want. Uh, I will um, throw an uh, Eldritch Blast at the book. Okay. <laughs> We're I will not dealing with... At, at the book at or the at book? the ink? I want to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not it, the book. I'm going to throw it at the ink, and if the book is collateral damage, the book is collateral oh. damage. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. Okay. Yep. No. I'm okay. still going to do it. I will let the group know. Uh, optics offline. <laughs> Understood. 
I don't think we need to fight this creature. I'll let it's him protective. blast his eldritches. Come on. It's I'm just a, it's a... just trying to keep us from reading the book. And I um, think if we kill it, it's likely to bleed ink all over the book and ruin it anyway. 20, 21 to hit on the first one. That is a hit. <laughs> I think it's kind of cute, to be honest. Uh I have to say, I'm it it's nice to see that Tikaros has grown into not wanting to keep every strange thing she finds. Hey, <laughs> you don't know that yet. Five damage. You want to kill it. I assume you don't want to keep you, the body. <laughs> you blast you blast with Eldritch's this blot of ink, which just splatters across the table and everything behind it. I don't think we should bring anything from this world back to ours. Especially not when it is tied to madness. And I don't want Prime reading any of it. Fair enough. So Adrastos, I didn't get to describe the room to you. You've probably seen it by now because you had a top opportunity to look. But as the door opens and you look into the other room, you see two of those merged goblin creatures holding an enormous book. This book is, at, the pages are at least seven feet each across. So it's a 14 foot wide book and probably 17 feet high. Just enormous. Hmm. And they're holding it up using all four of their arms on each side to hold the book in place. Now that book we can take back, you know? Um, we should yes, I'm sure this will fit in your pocket, Ow. Ptolemaeus. <laughs> <laughs> do those things look costal at all, or do they just struggling to hold up the book still? Um, you're a bit far away, but I'll say if you look in, you can tell they're kind of looking back at, at you guys and then looking the other side. So they're kind of going back and forth, almost nervous looking. I haven't made any aggressive action towards them yet, and they don't seem to want to fight me either, so. Arax, you speak Goblin, right? Correct. Do you think there's some, some way you could convince them to not be hostile? Assuming they speak the goblin languages, arrows, and assuming they're like any goblins we've ever seen. It's, it's worth a shot, either that or put out. I cannot speak that language. Deep speech or whatever you, you mentioned. Oh, yes. What would you like me to say? Let's have Hyrax try first, but we... We don't want to fight these things. We don't want to kill everything we see and not get any answers. Very well. And I'll start to walk the wrong direction. And what would you like me to ask them? Who are they? Hold who are they what? Why, who are they holding up the book for? Or... Oh. All right. Uh, he's going to... He's going to call out to them in Goblin. Um, by whose order do you hold up this book? And they're going to look your way and then very slowly turn their head the other way. Who's speaking? Uh, Hyrax will turn around and just honestly say, they want to know who's speaking. I, I don't think they're the ones that want to know that, Hyrax. I think these goblins are a mouthpiece for something else. You don't sound like Varus Tall. Or do they say that in Goblin? Actually, they're not the ones speaking. The voice oh, is okay. coming from the other side of the book. <laughs> the other side of the book? Uh, does it sound like it's coming? So it's coming from the book. 
Mm, I'm not going to be able or to someone on the other one. side of this giant book. Um, I'm not sure who's speaking. Should we try and get closer? Do you mind coming out from behind the book so that we can have a conversation face to face? Hmm. Rodkin, Devert, put down the book. And they will lay the book down. And as they place the book flat on the table, on the other side, you see a creature with an enormous mouth. Oh, one no. giant central eye. Oh no. And uh, ten stalks protruding from its head. Nine of them have eyes on the end of it. Oh but no. One of them looks as though it's been damaged at some point and the eye is no longer there. Wait, how did they get this thing's eye if it's an Eberron? And as the book lays down, he's going to look across and he's specifically going to look at Adrastos and go, There it is. Yes, you're the first who's recognized us as that since we arrived. What manner Why did of... I'm Verish assuming we do Tal... not have these in Theros. <laughs> Why did Verish Tall allow you to come in here? We have much the same question. Um, may we know your name? Hmm. I am Stereop. Stereopsis, and then he's going to take his hand and do the, the two beats on his chest. I am Adrastos of the Dawnbringer. Never heard of him. We're new. What what business do you have with this? You came into my room. Where is Varus Tall? Is Varshtal the, the feline-looking one? Yeah, tall, skinny, ugly, tentacles. Speaking of tentacles, he was dragged in. What? And he sinks down to the ground and just kind of sits flat and kind of... Var his tentacles droop down and Var Varshtal's dead? Well, he said it was a portal to some other world. He, he's forest, forest tall's gone. He's he's gone. I suppose so. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and the Very two creatures, this. the two creatures that are standing on the edge of the table. Uh, suddenly start to creep away. And he looks over, one of his eye stalks looks over and goes, Ronkin, where do you think you're going? And a light emits from it, surrounds the creature, which immediately turns black, shrivels from necrotic damage, and just falls to the ground. Nice. And the other one just freezes. It's all four arms up and starts doing this. Wait, I thought the eye that we had was a disintegrating eye. Or am I just assuming that it's... That's definitely not eye. the disintegrating eye that he just used, I'm pretty sure. Okay. <sighs> I'm muted, but yeah, that wasn't disintegration. <laughs> right. Um. So so without... without I want to look as natural as possible but can i with my like recollection look at his the the his little eye stalks and kind of approximate that the eye that we have there's the no same size th same size absolutely i'm not going to make you roll for it yes okay he well, floats back up into the air 
He doesn't look as meek as he did a little bit ago, but he's still he's, he, he's looking at the creature more angrily than any of you. And then he flips back and puts his main eye on you. So you're from Theros. How did you get here? We don't know. Hmm. Some sort of light pierced us, and we awoke here oh. in Eberron. A strand of light? I believe so. Yes. Like a which string. One, which one did it hit last? Which one did it hit last, too? I think, wasn't it? It was either me or Vara. I don't know. Actually, I think it was Tully. Was it Proto? Or not Not Proto, it's name Prime. Prime. Prime? Oh, well, we didn't even have Prime in the room. Oh, yes, he was. At the time. Yes, oh, yeah, he no, he was, but then, like, when, when it happened... Uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Can we roll a memory check? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Can we... Can one person roll and then someone else help? I'm What's, good with what whatever. Is what what is this? What check is this? Uh, you're going back in your own memory. Let's investigate. Okay. Who wants me to help them? <laughs> <laughs> Not it. Not me. Fine, I'll do it. I'll I have do a it. plus I'll one. I, I I can do it. I can. All do right, it. I'll I'll one. help you, Tully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I can do it. Totally. Ooh, ooh, yes. Please help. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, uh, <laughs> it was gonna be a seven. And it became a 17. Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> um, well done. It was actually Prime who was at the end. Okay. Second to last was Tikaros. Next game, I'll play a Loxodon because an elephant never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> we, the, the last one that it hit isn't with us right now. Oh, no. Where is he? And he just, he kind of edges forward, you know, kind of like somebody would lean forward on the edge of a table. He moves up to the edge of it. Where is he? Where is he? The well, demoness of some sort said that he was taken to the portal. Yes, yeah, so whenever we, whenever we woke up here, um, most of us were in cells of some kind, but he was roaming around free. He was free lightly. I'm sure he was being controlled in some way, but. I'll open my mouth, and in the succubus, in the succubus's voice, it'll say, "Oh, he was given to Zoriat," and he just kind of sinks down. His tentacles droop back down again. Shit. I can't even think Varsh Tall would be that stupid. You're sure? You have all the information we have. Yeah, I mean, we're going off the word of a succubus, but... Um, how, how, about his, how about his assistant? Is, is his assistant alive? Assistant? There, little there's guy still lives, somebody in the room. Little guy lives in the book. Oh. Yeah, no, he's not alive either. Oh. Well, how about the book? Is the book still alive? It's fine, I say, coming up and pulling it out of my bag where I had stashed it <laughs> while everybody was talking. Is it is it drenched in ink? Is it ruined or? Uh... Uh, no, actually, it's not. Wow. The splatter went past it, so. Wonderful. Uh, uh, wow, that open was a it. big blast, wasn't it? Open it. <laughs> open it to the last page. So, we'll open it, it and hold it up. No, no, set it down, set it down. Okay. Um, do any of you speak that language of the damned and, and dead? I think they call it deep speech. I think our new companion does. But, uh, I do. Ah, good. Um, ask it to rewind. I'll take a knee to where the book was placed down by Tikros and just go nicely. 
And then DC's like, could you please rewind? And you see as the pages begin to flip backwards. He goes, okay, that's enough. Stop, stop. And I'll say, stop. Okay. All right. Um, tell it to read. Read in common speech? And it does nothing. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a deep speech book. But you will no. not understand. You do. Okay. Read. And it begins to recount information uh, from about three days ago. When they uh, got the portal open and uh, they were able to first communicate with Dren. Are you just listening to all this or are you going to play any of it back? Uh, just assume that the second it starts speaking, uh, my audio just, I'm just allowing my voice box to just replay everything that it's saying Are you in common. Uh, forward, forward, skip, skip, skip. And I'll, I'll do as he says at this point. <laughs> and he gets you to skip forward, uh, just till it gets till t today. And it starts talking about, they had a group of sacrificial creatures they brought in as they're trying to strengthen Drin and open the portal so that he may come through with the army. Um, but they found there were more prisoners. And one of the prisoners appeared in the boat dock. So they brought that prisoner in. And Vorishtal, the, there's times of Vorishtal interrogating him and uh, the creature said that its name was Prime, that it was from Melitus, uh, that it's not sure quite how it got here. Uh, it's not sure where its companions were. And then it began listing all the details of its companions, who they were, information about them, just pretty much anything he could come up with to say that he was asked. And it wasn't, you know, it was a very drony kind of a thing, not like he was just offering the information, but he had no resistance to not say it. And uh, there's a moment where Verstal stops, it pauses, and then he says, we need, him, we need to take him to the cave in Rael. He apparently has the spark. That may be the key that we're looking for. And then it uh, goes into the conversation of you guys stepping into the room. And everything that happened with you there and him being sucked into the uh, thing all the way up to the point of the Eldritch Blast blowing the ink together. And at the end of that, it kind of goes. Rael. It's cave. Mm. Does that mean anything to you, Proto? I, I have to ask the, uh, the DM, does that mean anything to me? You'd be familiar. That's in the Northern Mountains. Probably the oh, yeah. same uh, kind of place where the stone came from. Okay. Uh, I would just look towards them, cut off the voice box, and say, to the north. Well, I think that uh, when he mentioned sending him through the portal, he wasn't referring to the portal to Zoriat. I didn't think he was that stupid to send a spark through that way. About how long ago do you believe it was that you came through this? portal from Theros. Perhaps two hours? Hmm. Well, we have some time then. They usually last hmm, 14 to 16 hours before they fade. And if that happens, I'm afraid we're going to be stuck here like I've been for the last 200 or so years. Uh, well, our plane is under great threat, and um, we're trying to deal with that, so it would be great to not have that happen to us. Well, um, I assume the ship is probably still in the dock, so all we need is the pilot. Um, he'll, he'll be a little unwilling to speak to you at first, but uh, he's... He's a good guy. Um, I don't think you've, you've ever met a tiefling before. Um, he's a little short, has horns, uh, name's Ishalak. 
Uh, if someone could go fetch him, he's in the boat dock. Uh, it's basically on the other side. Uh, I don't think he's to... going to be a good conversationalist. Short one with horns. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's a lie. He's dead. And he just kind of well. droops down again. <sighs> yeah, everyone was kind of a threat, so we've been um, feeling a bit non-discriminately. <laughs> My new friends are very efficient. We have been treated as hostile since the moment we arrived. Everyone presented themselves as a threat and we acted accordingly. I'm a captain. What oh. kind of ship are we talking Excellent. about? Excellent. Excellent. What's your dragon mark? Um, I sail by the stars. Uh, I'm afraid the ship requires a mark from the house of Lirinder. Oh, how do I get that? Well, um, Ishalak, uh, became an adept. Um, he was with them for, I think, five years. Then he became an acolyte, uh, for another three years. Eventually, be he became a lighted priest. That was, yeah, probably four years. Okay, um, but we have, what, 14 hours? Roughly. What's the... Or what's the what's the a couple of hours version of getting a dragon mark? Um, I don't believe there is one. It has to be conferred from the house. Can we just Ishalax? Use... Ishalax was on his forearm. Can we use his corpse? Chop it off. Well, unfortunately, it kind of has to be alive for the mark to work. It's it's a dead body's not going to do it. In what way does this mark activate something with the ship? I mean, it's a boat, right? Um, yes. And so it's a magical attunement? Yes. Yes. So you could uh, fake it somehow, potentially, right? Uh, Find some way to bypass it? Uh, I'm afraid. And he, he, he's kind of looking around and he looks at a Drastos and a... Uh, what happened to your arm? That's a great question. Uh, hmm. Well, I stuck it in a living corrosive liquid, which began to deteriorate and rot my arm. So I chopped it off with my own sword and replaced it with a javelin. Hmm. So you seem like uh you seem like someone who's willing to uh take risks. Anything to protect my family. He looks over at the, the goblin. Seaver. I want you to go bring Ishalak's spot. Actually, take the axe from the other room and bring me Ishalak's forearm. And he just kind of leans back with this big toothy smile. I have a plan. I don't know if we should be concerned. I will turn to Tikaros and say, this person sounds nice. Clint the player is like really excited. Adrastos yeah. is very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't see him. <laughs> I'm it's concerned gonna... and interested. Let's He's just... going to look around and... Um, so, uh, did any of you happen to, uh, as you were murder hoboing your way through here, did you happen to collect any of the circlets that they were using as their controls? I think one person did. Yes, it actually. Uh, yes. Uh, it was Tikaros had one. Yeah, yeah. Our friend Tikaros has one. Yeah, didn't mm -hmm. Hyrex, didn't you give it to me? Specifically the yep. one. Yeah. yeah. Specifically the one from the one with horns, actually. Yes. Oh, oh. oh. that's convenient. And he's going to kind of lean over and almost like we would put our elbow on a table. Kind of leans over on the table and looks at Tikaros and his eyes kind of wink, you know, fluttering his eyes. Uh, would you mind if we borrowed that? Of course. You're very, you're very impressive, by the way. 
I'll walk over and hand the circlet over. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm quite special myself. So, you say things are going on in uh, Theros. Um, by any chance, um, is Polyfonte still alive? I, uh, I don't know anyone who goes by that name. Hmm. Fine. Doesn't matter. Hmm. Do you have a description of that person? Maybe it would jog our memories. I have the worst memory. Hmm. Human-shaped. Male. Arrogant. Proud. Liar. It's a bit vague. Carry I bet many men matching this description. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do also want to point out that if, if you did mention that he is human shaped, it's been 250 years. That time probably passed in Theros as well. Hmm. With Tikaros asking for a description, does Tikaros actually not remember that Polyfontes is Orcos? She didn't at first, and then okay. with the description, she went, oh, and in her head, she's like, should I say anything? And then in Hyrax's head, should we say something? Hyrax is going to look at her like, mm. like he very specifically <laughs> used the weasel words of, I don't know anyone who goes by that name because he no longer <laughs> goes by Polyfontes. <laughs> Which is what Adrasos so was going to say, but he's like, nope, Hyrex got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Proto, um, how are hmm? your skills at manufacturing things? I can blacksmith. Hmm, excellent. And so he will uh, direct about building a fire once Sievert gets back and give you the circlet. And he's going to describe to you that he wants something that will fit around Adrastos's arm and meld it together with Ishalak's forearm. Uh, and then uh, the dragon shards need to be hammered into both so that he can control the arm. Uh, DM, how long am I blinded for? Oh, you're uh, just, it would have been to the end of your turn. So oh, okay. You'd be okay so now. then I'm, yeah. I, I would be wiping the, uh, the ink out of my <laughs> eyes and. Upon seeing this, I'd be like, that is stunningly crazy. So I can make it. Your... Okay, good. Could we, while we're waiting for this, the creature that you sent to return, could we possibly... You Rest. seem a polite enough sort, because we sleep here. We haven't slept in some time. No, of course, feel free. Excellent. And then Adrasos just fully passes out. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Bar's gonna like rush to him like real quick before he passes out and just, are you sure about this? I am. If it's what we need to do to get our brother back and get back home, it's fine. I can take it. If... I'll, try to, I'll try to make it as painless as possible. If anything. Thank you. Are we to sleep? Um, after everyone says that, I'm just going to like put my hand on Vara's shoulders, make sure she's looking at me. I can do this. I will need my family, but I can do this. And then I'll let her go and just kind of lean back against the wall. No, you could do anything. And she will lean next to him. If, and if we, sleep at night. If we take a long rest right now, okay, I don't think we're doing that, right? Because will it really take the double got, goblin like fourteen hours? So we have hours. six hours. Yeah, so that would turn into say. All right. I mean, if we mm -hmm. think we can do this in six hours, I really well, would like to long rest at some he, point. He's got to go get the arm and come back. That would probably take forty-five minutes to an hour. Uh, it's going to take uh, Proto some time to manufacture this. Plus, the the forge and makeshift angle are going to have to be built 
because there is nothing like this in here. So that's going to take some time to. Does Which I was about to ask for help to doing. <laughs> War, Warforged don't sleep, right? They we like require to be inert. Okay. We right. do have to be inert for six hours. Okay. I think that we can still rest though. And then like in what time we would be doing watch, we can assist Proto with. Yeah, yeah. and then, yeah. And then once year. Proto's done his part, he can sleep while yeah. we're yeah. doing the rest. Yeah. yeah, we can take this in shifts. Yeah. Well, I guess Proto's been asleep for a long time. Do you even need a rest? I expended much of my yeah, ability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So here, here's the question. You know that you've got about 14 hours. We know an hour of it is gone. So that leaves you 13 at, for Seabrook going and getting the stuff. So that leaves you 13 hours. If you're going to get in a long rest, which is fine, that's going to be eight hours. That will leave you five hours to recover prime before you lose your chance of going home. <laughs> So what would you How like big to is this place? Which we place? We got that information? Just where, we, where, in what, yeah. how much, how, where could Are you, Prime have gone? Like, do yeah. we know how big of an area he would be? If Are you, you were, asking how big uh, Eberron is? <laughs> oh, he could be anywhere in Eberron. We were told where he was. Uh, so, so, and he is to the north. The question would be, um, on this map, DM, how long would the journey take um, to get there? Well, uh, you would have well, we to, have to figure out where we are first. Exactly. We're going to have to have that discussion a bit more with Stereopsis. Okay. So it depends well, on if let's... you want to have that discussion before or after. But he seems confident about what he's got in mind here. Uh, I just, yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna spend some time talking with him if if they were gonna rest. And you can do that if, during that rest. Thing. You can do that if during I can rest, put so. my thoughts forward. I know this will cut into our time to rescue our brother, but we we cannot try to rescue him spent. All of us are running on fumes. We need to be at our best. I realize I've been a little bit snappy, so I think it is also because I haven't been resting. You, you're closer to Prime than any of us, Ptolemaeus. I don't think any of us blame you for your desire to rescue him at all costs. I certainly well, don't. Rested or not, um, if he's more than two hours away, that's a problem. Thankfully, somebody's saying how far we are away. I will turn around not not having caught the name of the beholder and be like, ah, giant eyeball creature, where are we now? He kind of looks at you and kind of snarls a little bit. It's almost as bad as the name they gave me when I arrived. My name is Stereopsis. Ah, designate Stereopsis. Where are we now? You are below the city of Sharn. East side, under the docks. Uh, so now that I know that we're, we're there, how far are we from... Uh, how was it? Uh, right. Uh, about uh, two-thirds of a continent away. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's I mean, in, in terms of distance, how much time would it take to? Depends on how you're traveling, which again, if you want to have this discussion with Stereopsis about his plan and where he thinks Prime is, we can do that. But I think that's details you haven't gotten yet. So that's details my character's <laughs> not smart enough to have. Let's. <laughs> well, uh, would you all be uh, willing to assist in the building of a makeshift forge? Yes, give us a little time to rest, and then yes. Very well. And uh, Sievert, very well. Sievert will assist you as well. He has four arms. If we do not want to take the time to fully rest ourselves, at least enough time to catch our breath. Oh, Translation, rest. if we don't want to take a long rest, we could take a short one. Oh. oh, rest, please, please, friends, rest. Trust me. I think we have this all in hand. If I'm right about what Varish Tal chose to do, and I'm pretty sure I am, we can't right. leave too soon or too late. If we go too soon, well, let's just say we might receive some interference. And obviously, okay. if we Rest go too we late, shall. 
you know. How long should we rest? I think we all need a full sleep. We can take watches. Um, I know we're safe, but um, to help Proto. Relax. Um, we're I can I house. can have assi I'll, I can have assistance, and I'll hit my the heft of my warhammer on the ground, and I will use fine steed. <laughs> and uh, a little cog will appear and start to literally break out and build almost a metallic war for war horse. Wow! Incredible. Mm. You're full of surprises, Proto. At, at this point, Adrasus. This is, is not a surprise. This is asleep. a horse. Ad Adrasus is completely asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say to the nice horse, "Keep watch over us." Please. And I'll nicely rub it right on the, the face. Immediately go still. Light and everything will fade and I shut down. Are we taking a long rest, Party? Okay. I yeah. think so. I think, I think while think. everybody else is taking a long rest, I want to stay up just a little bit longer to talk to stereo officers. So I'll just kind of wait for everybody to, to, to sleep before I do anything. As so, people fall asleep, um, Stereopsis is going to have the, the goblin Sievert tear pages out of the book because they're enormous pages and crumple them up and use them as like blankets to cover everybody so they get to be warm while they're sleeping. Hmm. Oh, uh, I Tam, love this guy. <laughs> just for uh, your interpreters, uh, the Warforged uh, horse mm -hmm. is a fiend. Okay. <laughs> So, I have a question for you. Yes, um, Tol Ptolemaeus, was it? Ptolemaeus, yes. Yes. You would like to come with us, correct? Oh, absolutely. I'm tired of being in this damn place. Where would you... Do you have any understanding of the Nyx and... What could potentially happen if the Nyx tries to, or anybody using the power of the Nyx tries to kill the gods? Ooh, kill the gods. That's an interesting one. Well, I've fought with demigods and killed a few of those. I don't know if any of the gods have ever actually died, but then you have to wonder, can they actually die? Because as long as someone believes in them, they continue to exist. I think the question would be more, what if people quit believing? And he goes off and just starts rambling about forgetting about the gods and the so, unraveling of things. So if that's the case, I suppose the quickest way to killing a god is by killing its populace. Oh, that's horrifically wonderful. Absolute. Would it be, though? Wonderful, oh. that is. Well, I mean, I'm... I was speaking, you know, theoretically, you were talking about how would we stop the gods. And I mean, if you were to get rid of all the, po if everyone lost faith, well, then you would just simply say the gods are dead. Hmm. But imagine if there was one person, just one, who maintained that faith. Would that be enough for the gods to survive? And what if they only believed in one god? But then if you believe in one god, you have to believe in the others, because why wouldn't you? So therefore you would have faith in all of them. That's not necessarily true, right? If you have faith in one, and understanding that particular god has enemies, or at least rivals, you wouldn't necessarily put your faith in their rivals or enemies, would you? Well, but you would then believe they exist. And if it's the belief in their existence that is the faith that makes them exist, then they would still exist, correct? But would that be as strong as the faith in, that you put in the God that you so pray for? Well, maybe you'd put more with energy, for lack of a better word, into that that being, but the others would still exist. Of course, then, if that were the case... The Pantheon would, would be lopsided. 
well, the Pantheon's always lopsided. You have the idiots on one side and the arrogant idiots on the other. That's true. What is it you're trying to figure out, Ptolemaeus? Do you have a desire to destroy the gods? No, but there is one that has the desire to do so. To return everything to the Nyx, as they well put it. Mm. And, well, with that could possibly come much death and destruction. Enough for the people to potentially lose faith in the gods, or entirely just not have a populace to, to believe in the gods at all. When I first arrived here, it, way before Barstal, I ran into a group of believers in Zoriat. They were still fighting the war at that point. And as they were being beaten and forced back and put through the portals, and those who stayed on this side were burned or necrotized into nothingness, you would think that all the believers would have been killed. But there were still people who believed in Zoriat, who believed in, in Dren, the Conqueror, who believed that they were the rightful owners and would bring a, a joyous, well, a joyous darkness and, and death to all of Eberron. And this cult is what has grown out of that and grown bigger and farther. So even by killing all the, the known followers, the faith still came back. You're saying that I should have faith in the people of Theros based upon these cultists that believe in madness and death and destruction? No, I'm saying that if you want to get rid of the gods, you're going to have to get rid of everything. But why would you want to do that? What, what would be the end result? To restart everything, apparently. Hmm. Oh, like, like after the Titans were born, I guess. Precisely. They grew. Ah, and when their evil was too much, the Nyx placed them all in cages and birthed the gods. Hmm. So instead of the Nyx making the choice this time, your friend wishes to do this. He says he is a servant of the Nyx. Hmm. Seems a little self-appointed. I would say so. At Let's least he didn't he call himself out. High Servant of the Nyx. Great priest I'm sure he's a few steps. I'm pretty sure he's a few steps away from that anyways. Would any of these events affect you in any way if you were to return? Well, I mean, obviously I don't want to return to anything destroyed. I, I, I really want to return and find the bastard who has my eye and um, become whole again. Out of character, where did we put that eye again? I have it. Oh, okay. Wonderful. <laughs> That's what the, this is the scariest thing. Uh but um Yep. Yeah. Uh when you faced off against this person, human like or what what other do you think he has the power? Do you think he had the power to live two hundred and fifty years? Faced off. Faced off again We didn't face off. We had a long, meaningful discussion about the philosophy of life. 
and drank a little bit too much. And while I was asleep, took my eye. That seems very... Evil! It seems evil. That's the word you're looking for. I was going to say despicable, but I think evil is a word. It works too. Despicable is simply a flavor of evil. Fair. Like vanilla. I see. And if your eye was returned to you? If someone was able to find it? Well. The new me... Since I've been here, I've had a time to deal with my anger, and I, I suppose you could say I've become somewhat of a, a philosopher. I look more upon the, the meaning of things, knowing that there is more beyond Theros. Between you and I, Ptolemaeus, Eberron is just one of many planes, like Theros. There are other places, places of great magic. Places of no magic. There's one dark place run by one leader who cannot die, who simply brings people there to toy with them. If, if that's the case, if that's the case, then we spend so much time going towards. Going back to Theros, is there any other point other than to try to find a more permanent solution to being able to travel from plane to plane, instead of staying in one place? Well, I suppose it's possible, and there are those who have done it. You may remember, there's a story of... Calix. Hmm. Yes. He's he's been here too. But that's neither here nor there, and he's waving a tentacle like a hand. That's neither here nor there. Our point at right now, we must get the spark that is in your friend what was his name? Primos? Prime, prime. prime. We must recover that so that we can open the proper portal back to Theros. Portals within a realm are, are, are nothing. They're trivial to do. Well, if you know how. Traveling across planes, that's, that takes something special. Right. If that's the case... I think all those other things I would love to talk to you a little bit more about, but I am spent. Oh. A lot more than I expect. Of course, rest, sleep well. And then when you awaken, we'll go chase down the lightning rail, and we'll return prime. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, I guess, just with everybody else and kind of sit by a wall and just looking at everybody sleeping, just fall asleep slowly, I guess. All right. So while you all rest, you get a, you get a good restful thing. Uh, nobody disturbs you throughout. And after eight hours, um, Sievert will come around and awaken each of you. Which he can do four at a time as he just puts a hand on everybody and kind of shakes them awake. We are level seven now, right? That <gasps> is correct. Now that we finally rested. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pam, before he places a hand on me, I'll just reactivate. Please don't touch me. I don't know you. And I'll just kind of step away and go back about his business.
I'll nicely pet my horse and uh, move over towards the make, makeshift forge. Okay. Which I Sievert will make has. My way. Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. Sievert has already fired it up as well, so it is hot and ready to go. I will make my way to Proto and say, How, what do you need me to do? Um, and I'll start taking measurements. Um, the cool thing will be the the head of his warhammer. It's one side's flat, the other side's faceted. Almost a bigger version of this. Oh, you guys can't there. <laughs> um, okay. and so he spins the top off of it, takes the the metal haft away from his bag, produces a much smaller handle, <laughs> screws it in, secures it, and then moves towards the forge to begin working. So and let me the, know what what checks sorry. you want, if any, Tam. All right. As the pounding is going on, um, Stereopsis is going to go over the plan. All right. What I believe that Varish Ta would have done is he needed to get Prime out of the city without raising any attention. He wouldn't have taken the boat because the boat, you know, the boat kind of catches a little bit of attention during the day. So I think he would have portaled him to the light rail and gotten him on the lightning rail where he could travel incognito. They, they could just stay in one of the staterooms and, and ride along that in the coach. And then he looks across and looks at all the faces and goes, you have no idea what the lightning rail is, do you? No, I'm afraid not. Absolutely um, not. Um, you know how you have a wagon? And you put the wagon behind horses. Yes. Imagine a wagon that didn't need horses. And then imagine that you put multiple wagons together. It's an incredible contraption. What pulls the wagons? Um, let's leave it at the simple thing of uh, their magic invisible horses. Very well. That travel across the sky. Hmm. Definitely makes it a little bit more complicated than, I, than, than you'd expect, but let's just go with it for now. Oh, that's okay. We have a boat. So anyway, the lightning rail's going across the sky, and we're going to take the boat and catch up with it. Is there a body of water large enough to catch up with the why do you need water the, on a boat the boat's not the rails in water? the the rails in the sky if the boat was in the water how would you catch up with the rail that's that's what i'm wondering does the boat ride the sky as well oh yes absolutely what? Eberon is quite the place I suppose that's what the mark is for, then. Yes. Well, the mark's to control the beast that is indentured as a uh, slave inside the engine, yes. Let's see. So you wish to make a slave master of me? Only temporarily. Only temporarily. And it's not really you that's the slave master. Ishalak was the slave master. You're the master of the slave master. That's much better. He's going to clearly have doubts about this. He's just going to look to the rest of his party. Look, once we're done, you can break the crystal, free the elemental. I don't care. I just want to go home. He, just do nod. he doesn't say anything else. He just nods. Uh, with that though, uh, as soon as Proto was ready to to help uh, with Adrastos, I'll just kind of be around and with a, like a hand on on Adrastos' shoulder or something like that. And as soon as I I see like if there's any sort of pain or something like that, I'll, I'll already uh already a healing spell if if he's taking any damage or or whatnot. Okay. That that's happening. All right. Um, Proto, I'm oh, sorry, Proto. Uh. Go ahead and give me a dexterity check. And this is going to be 
basically how long you can manufacture this. You've got the talent. It's just how long does it take you? So the better you roll, the less it takes. <laughs> You're shaking your head. Because I, yeah, my, my, my dexterity is not, oh, it's a plus three. I forgot. I get my own plus four. <laughs> I forgot. Okay. Then it's a 17. <laughs> Excellent. Um, it takes you oh. about an hour to fashion this thing and get it sized to the right side that, that it'll fit on oh, Adrastos's nice. stub of an arm and uh, the remainder of Ishalak's arm. I will say as I'm, as I'm working it, uh, Asmo, the horse, is like at times backing up to like kind of, it looks like it's steadying him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Once that is done, um, Stereopsis is going to call you over and go, okay. What I need you to do, Adrastos, is you're going to stick your arm in one side. You're going to stick Ishalak's stub in the other. And Proto, I need you to take these, these shards of the, the crystal from the dragon shard and hammer them in on each side to secure it. Does anyone have a strip of leather? I have you. I'll, I'll kind of take my my dagger and cut out a little bit of of the uh the pack that i had just like one of the straps and hand it over to adrastos i'm going to roll it up put it in my mouth and just nod <laughs> friend so adrastos are, are you ready. okay with this we don't have a choice i'm sorry <laughs> and as i say sorry i hit the gem in place as as you begin, uh, Stereopsis, his large eye just kind of opens really wide and stares, and it's kind of like the space around where you're working wavers as he places an anti-magic cone around what's happening. Hmm. Once the one side is set, I'll move around to the other, place the gem where it needs to go, and again, I'm sorry, and I will hit it again. Um, Adrastos, give me a constitution saving throw. Let's see if you can, uh, handle this and stay conscious. Come on, Adrastos. Can I, can I, like, squeeze his hand? Like, can I be, like... Which hand like are you going to squeeze? Like, yeah. The one, Ishalax or his? Ishalax hand? <laughs> his. I'll, I'll still have, I'll still have my hand on his shoulder, if anything. I, I if, yeah. if, if, if yeah, Vaughn if wants I... to do something, I would also want to do something. Yeah, if I could, I, I would just like, you know, like it can't, it just can't be like a magic. It can't be magic. Birthing, no, like just like, just like a husband providing wife support during <laughs> during birth. Like, just breathe. You've got it. Like <laughs> yeah. breaking my hand. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll just also give him a bardic inspiration with, with the words. I was just like, yeah, just same, same type of words and stuff like that, but also kind of imbuing. Okay. Imbuing it with what I can. What's your inspiration now? Uh it is it is still a D8. Okay, cool. That's still pretty good. I mean, D8. Yeah, that's great. I that's a D8 better than what it would have been. And do I get advantage from uh Vara? Um uh, yeah, cuz I really want this to succeed, so. Okay. You also get plus 4 from me because you're within 10 feet. Okay. That's true. So, um, you, you oh. have at least this, <laughs> this is oh, going wow. to be basically your attunement. Oh, wow! Oh, this is wondrous. Okay, so I get plus four from you, right, Proto? And then roll a d8. He gets six million. I hear it now 36. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> The wonderful thing about this is you are able to reach out through this and you can feel Ishalak's arm. You can feel this. You feel this dragon mark, but it, it's it's like a searing pain into your arm, which is now your arm. So you feel your pain plus his pain, plus the pain of this searing in as these things are being driven into your arm. But you have control of the arm. Okay. Yeah. Um you now have a purple, With, uh, slightly furry, short fingernailed arm. Okay. <laughs> With a tattoo on the other side. <laughs> yeah, just a very loud roar. Um, and then he, 
he like hits the anvil with the hand that is his now and just hmm. well this will certainly be easier for holding a shield the, the question <laughs> just just wanting to ask a question um adrastos is like seven foot something the tiefling was like five foot five <laughs> Size-wise. <laughs> it, depends, it depends on where the arm was cut, and, uh, you know, so it, it would definitely be a smaller arm. It's not going to match exactly. So. You have to grab my strong air. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, cool. Excellent. Frodo did good I enough, I would hand. say. Frodo did good enough, I would say, his skills in measuring at least got the arms the same length. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> a little T-Rex arm. Sorry, high rise. It's a little baby hand. It's fine. Yeah. It's not creepy. <laughs> All right. With that, Stereopsis says, Excellent. Now, let's go get the boat. As, Se as Sievert starts to head out the door behind, Stereopsis is going to turn and look back at him and go, no, you've done well. You need to rest. And one of his eyes is going to flip around. A yellowish beam is going to come out. And you're going to see as Seifert is turned into stone. Rip. Mm. Never liked those guys. Well, friends, let's go. Hey. Yeah. Are you liking us so far? <laughs> oh, absolutely. You're wonderful. Excellent. <laughs> yes, we're a means to an end. So Adrastos is going to take the javelin that was his arm and just kind of have to keep a hold of it and then take the one he was using as a weapon and offer it to Hyrax. Hyrax will graciously accept. Thank you. I don't think I'll be needing the both anymore. All right. As you make your way back through this place across the acid bridge and open that final door and look outside, you see a large wooden ship. And it takes you a moment to realize you were what he said you were underground, which is great. But the edge of this dock falls off and disappears into the darkness as you are above a large cavern. And sitting at the end of the dock is, for all appearances, a ship. But around the back of this ship is a glowing ring of fire. And I'm trying to get it. I'm trying Are to we get in the cogs or the lava pools? You're in the cogs. So you have this wooden ship. Pretty good size, about 70 feet long, a uh, good 30 feet wide. But it has this enormous ring around it that's held up from the bottom of the ship by this arm. And this ring is like on fire with energy and flames. That's correct, right? That's supposed to happen. Uh, yes. I believe that Absolutely. is the elemental. Yeah, there are several there are several parts to the city. Well, let's not waste time. And our friend is going to board up towards the front of the ship. <laughs> Stereoptus, where should I how do I do this? Oh, uh up on the command deck at the back. And there's this place at the back that has like a uh bluish orb. Um, as I'm walking back there, I'll uh, look at Vara and um, give her a smile and say, I guess I got upgraded from first mate, eh? <laughs> look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> well, I trained Stereopsis, Stereopsis is going to turn around and go, you're the pilot. You're going to be a little bit busy. And don't lose focus. I won't. Now, how did Ishalak say he did this? 
Um, think about, think up, but really hard. So I've seen my comrades fly before, have I? Because I know someone's cast fly before. Okay, so I'm going to put my put my hand out, and I'm going to imagine the sensation of flying. All right. <laughs> and the tattoo on the bottom of your new arm begins to glow, and it's a searing hot pain that digs into your arm. Give me a constitution saving throw, please. Okay. <sighs> He's going to get petrified into a chair. I've seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's my, I'm not going to use my iron dice. Address this us for the sake of argument. Out. I'm not, I'm not within 10 feet of you. That's okay. Trying to uh, fix the display on the stream to show the boat there. All right. So that'll be a natural 20 for 25. Excellent. <laughs> nice. It takes you a moment to manage the, the pain, but eventually you do. And the ship begins to move. And you begin to ascend. And as you go through, you pass several layers of dock. And, but you can see above, it's, it's black, it's night, mm -hmm. so it takes a little bit to be able to see the stars. But eventually you can make out where the stars are above you that you're heading towards. Stereopsis as... is... Sorry, Ole Miss? Sorry, as, as, the, as the stars are kind of seen... Uh, can can I kind of uh motion to Vara or like kind of like tap tap her in the back or something as we're like I'm kind of like staring up and just like look any familiar? Does any of it look familiar? I I was actually about to start charting it. <laughs> you see, she takes it. She like lays down on the floor of the ship and just starts like uh, you almost see her like regress as if she's as if she's like eight on her father's ship again <laughs> staring at the stars and then she kind of you know like she like kicks her feet up and it's like kicking her feet behind her and she's just charting them out um do i see anything familiar no you do not no um nothing familiar uh, inherently but um nice to be looking at a sky not the same stars but still stars there's always one thing that connects us. I agree. Has Tully's hair changed at all since no, it coming out? On it is hair? jet black. Okay. Stereopsis is going to say, All right, Adrastos, head north. Okay, I can do that because I have map making skills and I was trained by Vara, an incredible captain, so I will head north. Adrastos was learning to fly the ship and learning that it can fly quite well, learning that Eberron is a place with very large spires, things they really don't see uh, back on Theros. All these things are a little bit more modern. They, they actually get to see one version of the light rail headed off in another direction, headed eastward. So they get an idea what it's going to look like. It looks like several wagons covered with one wagon at the front that has like lightning coming out of it. It shoots back along it and, I guess, propels this rail down the line. But you are headed northward. And after about an hour's travel, you leave the area of Sharn and you begin to enter a more of a desert plain type of thing. Every once in a while, you may see a small village or something. Small village being yet another place with these huge spires and a, and a sprawling village. We're talking a small village the size of Melitus in on Eberron. But eventually, you come up on the lightning rail headed north. It is a rail that is made up of, and I just lost the count in my head, I believe it's 10 cars. <laughs> the car in the rear uh, has these things projecting out the sides of it. They look like they're made out of metal with a hole in the center of it. Then there are several wagons in between, and then another wagon like that towards the front. And then at the very front is another one of those wagons. It's got kind of a pointed front on it, and it has lightning coming out from underneath it that seems to be pulling this 
entire thing forward through the air. And Stereopsis is going to look back and, well, I think we're close enough. And when we come in here, what you need to do, Adrastos, come in high above it so that they don't see you. Whatever you do, don't come in from the sides. You see those things pointing out on the sides. Think of them as, think of them as a, a crossbow that shoots giant flaming rocks of lava. We don't want to run into those. No, we certainly do not. So I will need you to come in and sweep in. I don't know where on this carriage they might have time. But what we're going to have to do is drop down onto the top of the rail, and you'll have to climb inside the wagon and make your well, way to find Prime. Um, I don't know whether you should begin at the front, the back, or in the middle, but I would stay away from the cannon cars, the, the, crass, the crossbow lava shooting things. So it is up so to do you. Do I need crew. to stay with the ship? Uh, no, actually, uh, if you're not here and it's resting on the rail, it will just move along with it. Excellent. Where would you like to land on the rail? And I will move you over to the map with the uh, lightning rail on it. So that you can take a look at what you've got there. And I said I was going to, and then roll 20 didn't move the flag, so let's try that once again. Why does it have it in fog of war? I don't know. You know, half the time I can get it to do what I want, and the other half, I'm on stream with you guys. <laughs> Maybe it's us. Oh, it's there it goes. Jinx. Well, you can see it, but unfortunately, I don't think it's showing up on the stream because it's so large of a map. We'll see what we can do. All right. So uh, you've got the map visible to you. I can only put portions up up, up on the uh, screen for the stream. Where would you like to uh, hop on? Real quick, just a question. Player mm -hmm. me from a uh, question. Uh, are those two people supposed to be in the car? Or, there are or two people? There's... Oh, thank you. No, you should two be people in to... space, yeah. Yeah, they're supposed to be uh, on the GM layer. <laughs> I see, okay. Makes sense. But now you know they're there, so you know there are going to be things on the ship, so... Yeah, I mean, Big surprise. I think I th I'm pretty yeah. sure we, would, uh, we know that. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Adrastos is going to look to the rest of his party. What do you think? I think we should approach from the back as if we were hunting an animal. I like the back. Agree. That's smart. Which back, animal are we hunting? Good. Apparently a large metal one that has kidnapped our friend. Snake, I guess. There's this right? From the looks of this, perhaps a hydra. Hmm. So what starting... does it look like? I'll just point to the, the, sh the train. <laughs> <laughs> no, this has but one head. Regardless, from behind and above. Are we agreed? Agreed. And Let's I will... find a hydra. I will crank <laughs> it so that we're up above it and come in at the back. All right. Which car? Starting I at think... the back, we'll call that zero or one, and so the cannon car is one. I would say either one or two, but I will I will give my vote to the party, and then we'll decide. Proto does not vote because he is still confused. <laughs> <laughs> Say all, all, all the way in the back is a is a cannon car, no? Yeah. Yep. No. Uh I'll just I'll just say 
probably not we don't need to do it atop of that one right that's the one that that spews out molten fire hmm. indeed true enough then the one above it one above it yeah um All right. so with with my new hand like stuck on the thing i'll just look to my party give them the two beats for prime for prime All right. Wait, I drew, an arrow. I drew an arrow to where your <laughs> ship is. <laughs> okay. And let's go ahead and roll initiative because this is going to be an interesting trip. All and right. I'm just I'm going to roll for the entire ship. So we'll set initiative and we'll we'll go based off of that. So that will determine if you get surprise or not on this start. Mighty. Oh, oh, when it mattered the most. Natural 20 for initiative, which gives me a 20. Nice. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well. <laughs> so who are we good missing? Job, good so job, Adrestos. Yay. <laughs> Woo. Yay. Yay, Adrestos. Yay. Yay, Adrestos. Yes. <laughs> it, it looks like we got everybody. Excellent. Oh, wow. So, uh, Adrastos, since you are docking this thing with the uh, train car, give me a dexterity check, and let's see how quietly you're able to uh, land this thing. All right. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> okay, so you come down and you plonk, <laughs> and there's a little bit of a between, huh? And there's a, there's a little bit of a scrape. There's only twenties and ones for me. <laughs> there, there's a clunk and then a scraping noise as you scrape the little arm across the the top of it, leaving a scratch in the roof of this thing. Uh, well, they know we're here now. Uh, if we can't move quietly, we should at least move quickly. Right? Agreed. So all of you are on top. So you can, I'm going to just. No, I'm not because all 20 is on the wrong setting. So you would all be like on the top of it here. So you dock from the side of the ship. Um, this appears to be made of some kind of metal across the top of it. And every once in a while, there's a pulse of energy that shoots down where the blue lines are that go down the, the, the center of it. The energy that propels this thing forward. Um, there's no obvious way in from where you're standing. Where are the entrances to this wagon? Uh, I will immediately. We're we're still on top of it, right? I'm gonna you are try on top to of it. Correct. I'm just gonna try and appear to the side, like kind of where where it connects. Okay. Um, give me a perception check. Okay. That is uh fifteen. All right, you're familiar with doors. I mean, it's not like that technology doesn't exist in Theros, but these look very odd. It's almost like a a flat surface, but you see that there's a slight discoloration around the center of it. Uh, so there must be some way to open it. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll just kind of look down and then kind of beckon them across. It's just like. These seem like doors or like some some sort of entrance way. As you move off, Stereopsis is going to yell out from the deck of the ship. Remember, you've only got four hours. At most. Mm -hmm. All right. As you look down on the side of it and Get back there. You you figure out there's a little latch mechanism that you're able to turn and open the door. Do we go in uh, turn order from now, or? Um, uh, I'm fine with that. I mean, you were taking up the the front of it, but if you want to let Adrastos uh, take over now, that's that's cool. Yeah, I'll just kind of beckon them over when 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 that happens. And, and... all right, I will. Yeah, Twenty. Hop down and kind of. Armed, try to. 
Is it? A, it's a sliding door. It's a sliding door. And it right. slides the entire top off. Yeah, I was about to say, I'll just slide <laughs> the top of the train off. Hey, I'm but working with roll. The door still closed. I'm working with roll twenty here, people. No, it looks so cool though. That's what I. <laughs> It was like timed perfectly. It was like I'm gonna slide, and then the top just goes off. <laughs> just open it like a can. All right. Uh, yeah. So I'll just uh, go into the train. All right. So the rest of you are on the roof that haven't moved down into the doorway. Uh, as you enter this, you see various things stacked along the sides. There's like chests and bags and crates lining the sides of it. Obviously, okay. a cargo hold. Well, I will move in enough that my party can get in behind me. Because I have a lot of speed. All right. And then just kind of take a defensive stance. Uh, in fact, I will take the dodge action. <laughs> Very good. Which for me right. isn't dodging, it's just getting behind my shield, but... <laughs> Very good. All right. Uh, there doesn't appear to be anyone else inside mm -hmm. this cart. Well, I don't want to go for it alone. That's how I lost the first arm. Now, with a three-way tie on nine, uh, how do we deal with that for initiative? Uh, Dexterity score? We agree. Yeah, I'm just, uh, unless you want to change the order, we can just go with the order that it is. So I will Fair leave that for y'all. Dexterity score is one way to do it. Just do a decimal point and then... Yeah. I mean, if you want to give me your deck scores, is. I don't know the deck scoring queue. Vara, what's your decks? If it's 14, this plan falls apart. <laughs> Did uh, Vara, if, if you've said anything, Vara, we hear you. Oh, <laughs> why not? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah. My dex is, uh, you're asking for the modifier? Plus zero. Well, no, what's your actual dex? Because I think, I don't think Hyrax's modifier is 14. Oh, yeah, sorry. Ah, oh, 10. <laughs> okay, 10. Excellent. Proto. Eight. Eight. Oh, so it's already in order. <laughs> oh, nice. okay. Well, that was worth ah. it. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Very well, then. I love being We're a DM. Let's just move on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> all right, so there's a hatch down this way, uh, or a door, rather. Um, yeah, Hyrax will head inside. OK. If I'm going to, let's do right. this. If you're not inside, let's put your token just off to the side of the train, and we'll know you're on the roof. Good. That'll make it easier. So. All right. Anything else you're going to do, Hyrax? You've made your way in. Um, I mean, I still have an action, so I guess I could dash, technically. Okay. You're going to sl slip past Adrastos and leave him in the slip dust? Slip past Adrastos and be like, oh, I'll scout out ahead. Um, so, let me get up here. And yeah, that'll be it. All right, Vara. So there's a confirmed hatch over here. Does it look like there's a way in closer to the side that Tikros and I are on? The hatches are going to be over the the couplers on each end. Okay, so toward so I can do a hatch. You, you could go the, the other way and well. go in the front if you wanted to. I mean, this one Ptolemaeus found was on the back, so perfect. Okay, five ten. 15. Cool. So I'll go right here. <laughs> okay. Everybody's I, jumping I, and in. I'll, <laughs> and I'll open the door and say, hello, Irex. I, I went ahead and moved to the end because I forgot that uh, as a gloom stalker on the first round, I get 10 extra walking speed. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, you'll open the door and I'm like, uh, you, you probably catch him off guard a little bit. He he like readies his uh, himself for whatever comes through, and then oh, oh hello, oh, Sora. Sorry, this was just the closer end of the train for me, <laughs> and she just uh, 
Can I go ahead and peek in the other car? Is there any kind of window or way to no, view it's, inside? No, it's a closed door. You would have to open the door to peek inside. Okay, I'll wait then. All right. But uh, I will just, excuse me, scoop past high ranks and not be sure. standing on the uh, precarious place right there. All right. Proto. I'll just head on in down here. Let's see. It puts me about right here. Um, just walk in. And I'll say to the assembled party, uh, does your brother power down? Looking at all the uh, the cases and the uh, crates and stuff. And it's literally the end of my turn. Is anybody going to answer him? I mean, you could do that within the... I don't think note. Adrastos knows the answer. So, All right. Uh, Ptolemaeus, um, you've been standing on the back edge of this rail car, correct? Yes. So you're just standing there watching everybody go in? Yes. Okay. So when the door opens on the other rail car, uh, a little bit surprising for you. Uh, and a, someone's going to step out, so... Oh, oh perfect. Gonna, yeah. So this guard steps out, and since you were standing on the edge of it, kind of looking around, he does a quick look. Uh, I assume the door was left open, Proto? Oh, yeah, he did not have the wherewithal to close it. Okay. So uh, he doesn't notice you, Ptolemaeus. Good. <laughs> but I'm going to stop him there because he just steps out. Oh, whoops, and it's your turn, Ptolemaeus. I didn't mean to advance past you. Oh. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> um, it might be. I w <laughs> Okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, seeing the guy show up right here, and he's just... I will say, he steps out, looks around, and looks forward, and it's the door's open on the cart in front of him, so he obviously sees Proto standing there. Okay. So, seeing, if he sees Proto, and he sees inside, I would like to, I'm going to Eldritch Blast him. Okay. He did close the door behind him when he stepped out, by the way. So just so the door's closed. Perfect. Because I will Eldritch Blast him. Okay. And uh, I am, I am, uh, this is good. This is good. All right. Uh, it will be a 15 to hit. That's a miss. Okay, I will do that. I'll throw a second one. As right. Kind of immediately afterwards, and that is a 17 to hit. Both of them kind of hit and just reflect off of his armor, which immediately draws his attention to you, of course. Okay, uh, all right, sounds good. Uh, if that is the case, I will the time to I'm just going to call out to to uh whoever like since it seems like when he was looking down it looked like he was looking into the car so I'm going to try to shout out we've been made and da -da -da -da. get the fuck away from here uh, I'm just gonna run across the the rail, the, the okay. car. Okay. All right. Up the top. Very good. All right. Icarus. Oh damn it! I'm going to clasp my Theros star necklace and cast mage armor on myself, All real right. quick. Hearing Tolly say we've got company, 
then I'm going to rapidly run where I saw Vara go inside and okay. follow inside with her, All right. get some cover. And that's my yeah. turn for now. All right. Adrastus. Looks like I'm muted. Um, so it looks like the front is covered by my allies. So I'm going to run by Proto and uh, I'm going to take a couple of attacks against this gentleman. Okay. Uh, yeah, standard attacks uh, with my javelin. All right. It's outside. It really just grab him and throw him off. <laughs> I might. Uh, 17. Uh, that is a miss. Okay. Once more with feeling. 18. That one hits. So your first one kind of skips off his armor. Your second jab hits. Let's see how deep this penetrates. Not very. It's a javelin. I want my sword back. Uh, 11 damage. All right. And it jabs into him and he kind of yells out in pain and then raises his arm on the opposite side. And you see this, he's got like a stick in his hand. And as he raises it, you hear this kind of mechanical noise as it turns into a large rock with spikes on it, and he swings it at your head. I want that! And first time he swings at you, he is going to miss horribly. I don't even have to ask. Uh, the second time he swings at you is going to be a 23. Oh, that'll hit, yeah. All right. So he is going to connect, and holy crap, max damage. That is going to be 11 piercing damage. Okay, um, just for the cinematics of it. The first one misses, the second one just cracks a dress on the side of the head. It's going to be big smile on his <laughs> face. Like, okay, you've activated my trap card. <laughs> and he is where he's going to say, we have trouble out here, but this vehicle's moving through the air at high speed. So who knows if anybody heard it or not? I do, you don't. All right. Anything else addressed us? That was no the, reactions, it, no nothing. Okay. Uh, yeah. well, actually, because some people have them. I do have one. I will react to the missed attack. I'm glad I asked. Um, and I will take the skate of the uh, spiky ball over the shield and stab him underneath it with my riposte. Uh, it's cocked. And that misses. Very good. Irax, you're up. You definitely can hear All the scuffle right. happening at the back end of the, uh, <clears throat> the rail car. I see. The door is open and everything. Do I, do I have clear vision of it? Uh, well, you've got a proto standing in front of you and a, uh, a drasto, mm. so I wouldn't say it'd be a very clear vision. What? What if I climbed up on one of these uh, crates? I'm absolutely good to say yes. All right, get a vantage point. I'm going to climb up here. Uh, and seeing that my friend is uh, having a fight with this fellow. Um, yeah, I'm going to throw a javelin at him. Why not? All right. Or I could... So I could do that, or I could just go scout the next car and, and trust address us to fight this guy. But I've already committed it, really. Uh, let's see. First throw, that's not going to hit. It's going to be 14. That's a miss. Uh, what happens to Javelin, by the way? Uh, in this case, since it's if you roll a nat 1, it's probably going to go out the window, okay? <laughs> or out the door and... Right. But it'll just peg on the, the wall of the the train car all right Still i'll take that all right extra attack that is going to be 
an 18 to hit. That's a hit. Okay. I would be concerned. It's not. Uh, wait, where's my thing magic? Why'd it go away? I think I know. No. Damage. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I have spell slots again. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to Hunter's Mark this guy. I'll be all right. I wonder what that's like. I think you only have slots. like nine cars to go. So, yeah, so I should probably conserve things and not just waste entire spell slots on a single guy. Um, <clears throat> that is going to be uh, seven. No, nine. Uh, nine piercing damage. I don't All know right. how much damage I've <laughs> lost for the fact that I keep forgetting I have fighting style. It gives plus two damage. <laughs> We've all been there. Get you a little sticky note. It's, stick it on it's, your I feel like it's been weeks since I remembered that. Um, <laughs> nine piercing damage. All right. Very good. He recoils with the with the hit. He now has your javelin sticking out of him. Uh, yeah, loads of fun. Uh, Anything else? Um, hmm. I kind of want to see how that turns out and get everybody all together before we advance to the next car. So no. All right, all right, Vara. I advance to the next car. <laughs> Vara's gonna, yeah, Vara's gonna um, look to Hyrex and Tikaros and just kind of for a moment just, are, do we, do we need to kill everyone? Do we want to kill everyone on this train thing? I don't have a I word think, for train. Train. <laughs> I think time is of the essence. I think we need to move quickly and we need to find Prime. Last time we killed everybody, uh, we killed the pilot and then had to graft an arm onto our friend, though. So I'm a little, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm attacking him because he's attacking Adrastos. Fair point. Um, and then, okay. So I'll take my action and I'll go ahead and wild shape. You're not going to do a bear on the... I'm not. I'm a snake. Just gonna You're do... gonna be a snake on a train. Okay. That would be fun. I don't think Far has <laughs> ever seen a snake. Um, I'm gonna just do star form archer. Okay. And then I'm. Let's see. I think I'm just gonna stay where I'm at. I I, I have I have a feeling that <laughs> a is gonna handle that. <laughs> All right. Arto. Well, there's no room out there for two people, so can't really help them very much. Oh, Don't oh, worry, wait, Proto, I'll on. make room. How far away is this bitch? More than 60, probably, huh? for me. Oh. Um, that's yeah. yeah, 60. Never no, mind. So seeing this monstrous lean in standing in the doorway where I really can't do much between the most, you two seem to have this. I'll help the others. And I will uh, move up this way and uh, get ready to help the others do something. All right. Ptolemaeus, just hanging out outside. <laughs> I'm still outside, yeah. <laughs> um, I will, bu 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 bu, I guess. I mean, technically, it's I'm like along the center of it, not, not to the side of it. So right, it yeah, be... right. Right. So it's this this would be 30 feet. Yeah. I'll just like kind of hop of it. down on it. Uh okay. would it be a bonus action or an action to open this door is still open, right? The door that they yes. just they the door from? the door to the car everybody's in is open. Yes. Okay. Uh I'll just kind of hop down and just look at everybody's like Adresso's got it, right? We should probably head out, head head over. And uh I will use I'll use my action to do a dash action just so I can move out of the way and not in the middle of everything <laughs> okay. uh, and just be like kind of like yeah kind of huddled around the area all right okay Tikaros. so wait I missed that Tolly did you actually open the door or no oh the doors no 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 I didn't open the other door I only okay. I only yep. came in from the opened door Yep, just checking. Cool. I think we're, I think we're ready to, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like... With you in a moment. To... <laughs> it's just a minor distraction. Um, I think we need to keep moving. 
I say to everyone, and I'll cast fly on myself. Everyone will see I start levitating and I'm going to shoot out of the door we just came through. And I want to move 60 feet along the side of the carriages. And I want to just do any look for windows, openings, anywhere I could maybe see, just do a massive scout up the side. What is your flight speed? It is 60 feet. Okay. You're going to have to hold on to the train or it will Ooh. leave you behind. Cool. <laughs> so but there that. are there are pieces of, of metal that run along the side of it. Uh, the problem is every once in a while, there's a shot of electricity that goes through it. Oh, I would not know that. So as you are making your way along the side, go ahead and put your uh, token where, roughly where you'd be. Cool. It's going to head out. And so you can keep your movement speed, but you're going to have to, you know, be hand over hand on holding on to something as you go. How fast is this train moving, by the way? A uh, little less than 20 miles an hour. Or you never would have caught it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. you're, yeah. And 60 it's... feet a second is what? Like just less, just under seven miles an hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. or six, 60 feet, yeah. six seconds. That's sorry. like if she Ten wasn't holding second. on, it'd be. Yeah, it's, it's booking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I see lightning. She's not that stupid. She would try and just whoop, whoop, like do a really right. dexterous, cool. You're gonna, kinda... you're gonna actually see it shooting down the side because it's like a bolt of it that comes moving your way. So Sweet. what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to let go and re grab it before the train leaves you in the dust. I, I need love it. An acrobatics or athletics check, please. Okay, Got this, Tickeros. Oh no. yeah, I'm gonna take that acrobatics. Here we go. Yeah, it's good. 17 okay. and I get right. plus three. So dirty 20. Right. So <laughs> that what I'm going to do is when you succeed, you're going to lose five feet. Okay. In that time. But yeah, don't fail the saving throw. It'll be a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I love it. Okay. And All I'm right. just looking for any windows, any openings, and I'm doing a prime scout. That's what my mission is. That's on all. the next cart that you're on, uh, you do not see any windows. Okay. And back to Adrastos. Okay. I've got okay. to minimize the... I got a crazy here. plan. Okay. Might work. So what I'm going to do is first, bonus action rage. I would like to rage. All my muscles bunch in the muscles in my brand new arm. Work. Um, then I would like to attempt to grab this gentleman by the mace and remove him from the train, but keep the mace. Oh, nice. Interesting <laughs> idea. Okay. Swapsies. <laughs> See you later. So basically, you're, you're grappling the mace and mm -hmm. attempting to sling him off with it. So the first thing let's do, let's do the grapple. Okay. And that is a strength. Uh, opposed strength? Yep. Okay, great. Because I'm raging, I have advantage. That's why I did it. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. 23. All right. You are able to grab hold of the mace. Now you're attempting to sling him off. So this will be like a second attack type thing is how I'm doing this. So go ahead and okay. give me another strength check as you attempt to fling him off. All right. Come on. <laughs> 26. You pull on this and you pull really hard on it and you feel as though he begins to move. And then all of a sudden, it's like you're trying to pull the entire mass of the train away from uh -huh. itself. And he just stands there. And are you, I assume you're not going to try any movement? I'm going <laughs> to... If, if he's not moving, I'm still trying to get the weapon out of his hand. I'm going to say that's it for this time. You don't get the weapon away from him. Okay. Um, but you've still got a grip on it, so it's still grappled. Yeah, no, I won't move. That's fine. All right. He's going to lean his head back and then slam it forward into your head. Okay. And he, uh, he hits you, but not as hard as he intended to. 
<laughs> so unfortunately, it doesn't do much to you. So instead, he's going to take his fist and pull it back. And as he does, it seems to change from being just the gauntleted fist into a large stone. As he punches forward with it. Let's see if he does any better on this one. <laughs> That's a 13. Then I would like to use my riposte. Okay. And I would like to, I, I don't know how you want to do the, the extra superiority die, but I'm, I'm trying to wrench it out of the mace out of his hand. Okay, so you're going to, let's just do it as a, uh, a grapple again, and normally you can add your superiority die as damage. So uh, I'm going to let you add it on to your athletics check. Oh, glorious. Okay. Uh, okay, so that will be 27. You yank it out of his hand. Great. Um, okay, so that's my riposte. That's, that's it for me. Okay. As you get hold of this and yank it out of his hand, you hear the cogs turn and it turns back into a stick. That's okay. He doesn't have it. <laughs> right. Though I am disappointed now. <laughs> Irax. Right. Um, okay. Seems like it's unpopular to be uh, to be helping Adrastos by throwing <laughs> javelins at this guy. I, um, <clears throat> so I guess I will quietly. I don't know. Uh, Tico's trying to look in through windows, right? She's been trying to find a window. I don't want yep. to uh I don't want to spoil her her whole uh shtick by advancing into the next car, but No, spoil it. Go spoil it. All right, fine. I'll uh clamber <laughs> down. <laughs> I'll clamber down and uh go check out. See see if I see if I can uh quietly open the door. Is there any do way to do that quietly or does it just noisily pop open? Um, it's, they're not really noisy when they open. They just slide open. So All right. I'd say it's fairly quiet. I'd like to peek in. All right. Let's see what we're looking at. Oh, I see at least one person in there. Yep. Uh, you open the door and at the far end, you see one person. Uh, they appear to be some kind of a guard. They're not as well armored as the person that Adrastos is fighting, but they do have a, a long sword. Okay. Oh, uh, is there any kind of oh, cover? Do, they? Takes <laughs> do what? I missed something on the oh, do they? I think. Uh, I was going to say, uh, is is there any way I can? Uh, is there any cover nearby that I can dart into so I'm not seen? Uh, there are these uh, rooms on either side of the doorway that you just opened. They have a door on them, so it looks like some kind of a room. Sure, I'll pop into one of these. What is, what's in here? What is this? Um, there's like a, a box with a hole in the center of it. Strange. So odd. I wonder what that's for. Yes. There's so many curious uh, inventions in this place. I can only imagine. It has a little handle oh. on the back of it. It has a little uh, thing above it with a pipe that runs down to it. It's just... I can only oh, it's imagine. a drinking fountain. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> it's a boot washer. <laughs> what sort of invention yeah. must this be? <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> I get it. The one that Just... you went into legitimately is like moved a little bit, so you could like see a hole through the freaking. Listen, the like, train. Tam, I'm gonna say, I'll go out on a limb and say, with with passive perception twenty four, I definitely smell what oh, this yes. room is for. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, he'll duck inside for the time being. I, um, I want to get both carts onto the, the stream screen, and I can't get them both on at the same time, so I apologize to the stream, but, you know, we'll get there. But yeah, anyway. how attentive does this guard look right now? Is this guard watching our door? Like it did looks you try on to map? stealthily? Did you try to stealthily move into that? I did try to do that. Roll me a stealth check. I will certainly roll you a stealth check. Happily roll it for you. So that is 12 plus 5, 17. 
he appears to have been uh, had his attention on a piece of bread that was located on the table to the side of him. So he did not I see, see. You slip into that room. I see. Okay. Um. Okay. Huh. What are all these? What are these? Are these like shelves or? They're tables. What are these? They're tables. Tables. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I might try and quietly advance. Let's see. So I've gone this way. Might try and move up here. Duck under this table. Wow. Oh, with, with your stealth Keeping check and eye. his and his perception check, I'm gonna say you make it. No problem. All right. Uh but I'm not going to attack just yet, so I'll I'll Leave it there for now. Okay. All right. I believe we are at Vara then. Okay, smokes. Um, seeing that Hyrax has been stealthy, I'll go ahead and stealth as well. And I think I would just go ahead and go to. Let's Did you leave see. the door open behind you, Hyrax, or close it? I assumed you closed it, but that might have been a mistake on my part. Uh, to be honest, I kind of figured that I might have left it open. Okay. Cool. That would be ideal. Um, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So where you, by the way, uh, Ptolemaeus, where you said you saw that that one was open, actually, that's where it's leaked onto the floor. <laughs> Ew. <the> <laughs> oh, Very nice. Boy. Oh, it's a different uh, shade, I, I see. Back. Yeah, I picked a poor background yeah. because I, black black didn't make things stand out well enough. So that's why can, I went with Can I not have stepped in that? Maybe? <laughs> no, too late now. Uh, nice. Oh. Um, so I will stealthily be here. I'm looking at Hyrex. Does Hyrex look like he intends to attack? Uh, not just yet. Great. Um, so I'll be here and I'll hold action. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and just hold an action, and if this guy walks up on us and notices us and is looking mean and angry, I will guiding bolt him. Okay. All right, very good. Only if he's a threat. So if he walks up and he's a threat. Okay. So I am going to move back to the other cart and Proto. All right. Uh, can that guy just see me? Uh, if both doors are open, uh, he's not been very attentive. He was looking at something else, but eventually he's going to notice the doors open. Okay. Uh, how stealthy were you guys walking out of the door? Because after you got in the cart, I wouldn't have seen your little, you know, Pink Panther sneaky. Um, I was pretty stealthy. I haven't walking rolled out of the... my stealth yet. Walking out of the that. cart, I don't know. I, I might not. Have, I think I was more stealthy going into the next car than out of this one. Oh, sweet! Should I? Should Six I? Six pound, do? eight ounce, baby Jesus. Because uh, <laughs> should I do a stealth check? By the way, Sam. Uh, because of how poorly the guy rolled in this perception, I'm going to say no. No. Okay. <laughs> it cool. was pretty bad. It was pretty Great. bad. Uh, all right. Well, then I'm going to follow my buddies. Oh no! Uh, you made a mistake. <laughs> As a reason, I asked how stealthy you were leaving. <laughs> oh well, uh, you know what, Vara, go ahead and roll it. But I guarantee you're going to get higher than a five. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, we'll put that to the test. <laughs> I got a three. <laughs> you don't have a modifier. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> In that case, I'm still, I, that gets it. He, I step he, into the gross, grossness and I go, oh, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> but you dive behind the table anyway. So the guy kind of looks up and that's when he notices the door is open. So we'll go from there. All right, Proto, you're up. Doesn't notice you're Hyrax. <laughs> no, but I, I, can I see him looking at the door? 
Uh, absolutely. At this point, he looks up and he sees you and he sees that both doors are open, which is a bit unusual. Oh, right. Um, well, that sucks. Uh, <laughs> seeing uh, him looking at me, uh, I'll hold my hammer and my shield and I'll just start hitting on my shield uh, while I uh, cast Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. Uh, give me a 22. All right. And I will walk forward. Uh, let's see how many move. So I'll move my full distance looking in. I'm pretty sure I could see Vara considering her stealth check. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and noticing her there, I'll just be like, do you like games? Do you want to play? Uh, I think we're trying to be stealthy. <laughs> And I will nicely, as best I can, whisper, he's already seen me. Ah. And uh, I will end my uh, my turn there. As, uh... All right. Ptolemaeus. From my, from my previous stint at the top of the cart, did I notice that the electricity only goes through the two sides or all around the cart? You've noticed it goes down the two sides and also down the center of the top. Okay. Um, if that's the case, seeing as how... Oh, boy. This is not a... It's probably not a good idea. I'm not going to do it. Uh, actually, if it's not a good idea, should I do it? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to walk up to this coupler kind of take a little bit of a of a side step around proto and using whatever uh hand holds here can i go okay. back up onto the top of the car uh yeah if you could climb down you can climb back up absolutely perfect okay uh once i do that let me see how much how much movement how 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 tall is the they're ten feet tall. Ten feet, so okay. I'll I'll only be able to move another five feet, and I'll just continue. I'll, I'll just move forward on top of the cart. Um. And I think that's the end of my turn. All right. Yeah. Okay. Picaros, lightning rider, <laughs> on the side. I'm gonna right. Damn it, no windows? What is this train thing? I'm going to fly scramble to the top of the okay. train on top instead of the sides, and I want to see if there's a door here at the top to open up, if I can do all of that, like use that as my action to open the door and peer inside. I'm going to say to open the doors, you're going to have to be down on level with the coupler. You can't do it just from the roof. you kind of got to get down okay. in there. Okay. Fair enough. I will do that then. So you could be. I will get right down there. so I can open it. Okay. Uh, so you open it, and you're going to be opening it behind the person with the sword. So you open it up, and you yes. see, you clearly see a person with a sword standing there, whose attention appears to be at something at the back of the uh, rail car. Excellent. Does that use up my whole action? Uh, that was just movement, as far as I'm concerned, an interaction with a simple interaction oh. with an object. Okay, then I'm going to start quietly creating a fire bolt and hold it until I see this person be threatening. All right. Let's go That's back it. to the other rail car and address those. Okay, Adrastos is disappointed that his new acquisition turned into a stick. So I'll just stab this man. With your javelin, I assume? Yes. Isn't it nice having two arms again? It really is. <laughs> uh, well, that's an 18 on the die, so I imagine that's that a hits. hit. Yep, that's a hit. All right, awesome. Uh, 12 damage. Alrighty. He looks pretty beat up at the moment. Well, I've got another one for him. 
That's not going to hit. Uh, okay. I will finish there. All right. I'm going to determine what his action is with a die roll. He could do one of two things at this point, and I got to see how smart he is. He takes this opportunity to lunge forward, grab your waist, and try and, uh, shove you into the cart behind you. So... Uh, like a grapple, so contested strength check, or you can use athletics since you're the grapple. Okay. Fourteen. Ten. <laughs> he fails miserably. So um, he starts to push, and I just catch down on my feet, just shove him off with my shield. All right. <clears throat> And that's going to be his action, so that's all he can do at the moment. And Hyrax. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Honestly, I have no idea why I haven't just thrown something at this guy. Um, all right, so he's an, he's, he's an unaware. He's unaware, right? He's, he's surprised, <laughs> technically, by me if I throw something at him. Yeah, at this point, I would say he's very surprised. All right. <laughs> Were you surprised? So, I was surprised. And that's according to what I believe. I lost you for a minute there. Sorry. And thus, accordingly, would I be able to get advantage? Uh, <clears throat> not unless you would normally have a sneak attack. Well, hold on. Wait. Just because he doesn't know there's something there. in there. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right. Um, I mean, you're. I, 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 I could have sworn I read something in the player's handbook about it, but I'll, I'll get back to you on that at another time. Right I'm sure now, Zio, I'm I sure Zeal let us know in a minute. But go ahead and make your attack roll. <laughs> All right. I will go ahead and throw a dart at him. I guess you're without. Not, I was going to do a sharpshooter attack. Okay, you're not flanking him or anything. That's why I'm I'm not seeing it as an automatic uh, advantage. I got gotcha. you. Um, all right. Well, regardless, it's a 17 to hit. I'm afraid that's not good. Oh, wait a minute. This is the other guy. Yes, that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> got my two warriors confused here. All right. In that case, that is going to be... Uh, where's my D4? Where is she? There she is. That is going to be... Uh, 18 piercing damage. All right. Holy cow. Uh, it hits him and he kind of winces in from it. Uh, almost drops his sword, but is able to maintain a grip on it. Definitely hurt him pretty right. good bad. All right. Well, then I'm going to rush at him after that, uh, drawing a javelin as I do so and get him uh, Yes, this uh, would trigger my firebolt simultaneously with Hyrax. Good. Very good. <laughs> and he's a he's a threat now, right? He's a threat. I'm going to do it. If yep, so mine, so. Would, mine would trigger as well. Oh, this poor yeah. guy. <laughs> well, in that case, uh, that we're going to go in the order the actions was held because the held actions would happen before Hyrax's action. Oh, wow. Uh, Vara, go ahead. It was a guiding bolt, so... Okay. Uh, it's an eight to hit. <laughs> That's a miss. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's me. Okay. Uh, Tikaros, go ahead and do your attack. Yep. 19 to hit. That's With a hit. With a firebolt. 13 fire damage. Ooh. All right. And uh, the firebolt hits him, hits his armor, and just kind of spreads across the armor and doesn't appear to do anything. Nothing at all. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> Electricity well, all the way. I'm sick of fire. It works Random when it rats. works, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, 
I run up to try and skewer him with my javelin, and I roll an 18 to hit with That's 10 hit? piercing damage. All right, yeah. that does damage. That hurts. So. Tim, you're about to make Tikros completely change elements. How do you how do you feel <laughs> yeah. about that? Like, I, feel, just, I feel it's horrible about it. It's like reconsider classes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I feel horrible about it because she's very good about getting there to do this. Uh, Next okay. session, Tikros is just a level seven barbarian. Yep, yep. I don't know where I am. Okay, anything else, Hyrax? Adrasos would be so proud. Uh, nope, oh. that's it. All right, Vara. Cool. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I will go ahead and step out. Right here. Oops. That's... And I will guiding bolt at him again. Okay. Now that I've got a better line of sight, I'll just go, oh, jeez. <laughs> I'll scoot <laughs> over, blaming my angle for it. Um, <laughs> and that's an at 20. <laughs> Uh, oh, that would that would be a hit. Vara. <laughs> How do crits work on spells? Same? Different? Uh, it's an attack. It is an attack. So max damage plus roll. Max damage right. plus a roll. Okay. Give it yep. the chair. So well, so that would be 46. So 24. Oof. Uh, please and explain then... to me what happens when this guy is gu guiding bolted into oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> I missed my first one, and I'm just like, gosh, I just need to get a better angle. <laughs> and I'll go, Hyrex, pardon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it, I assume, just like red mist almost. <laughs> and I go, oh, no worse than any of the other stains in this car. <laughs> 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 Oh, goodness gracious. All right. Boy. Anything else, Vara? Vara the Destroyer. Vara uh, the Destroyer. Is Adrastus is still fighting this other guy? Yeah. I'm going to go, I, maybe someone should help Adrastus, and I'll start walking back <laughs> towards him. <laughs> um, so I already moved 5, 10, 15. Excuse me, Proto. Can I move? Through proto on this coupler. You can, you can move around. They always, you okay. know, you can always move through or around. So an ally. 20, 25, 30. Great. I'll be here. So I've um, entered back into this trend car and I just <laughs> address this. I just eviscerated someone. Do you need help? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> proto. Uh just watching this individual who I was hoping to just knock unconscious, just turn into a red mist. I will just walk forward into the cart and just, I thought we weren't going to kill everyone. It was Vara that said that, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Except worship, that guy. Everybody should live God. except that guy. Yeah, I just didn't <laughs> like him. He just, he just had a weird look about him. <laughs> Vara right, so didn't make that decision before she walked into the poo car. I could, yeah, I like I was, that changes minds. To say. <laughs> I'm going to say that's in poo. <laughs> should, this I is guess... nasty. Everyone should first, die. First <laughs> off, I, I just want to say if whoever used that had blue poo, <laughs> other words. Um, anyway, I, I, uh, I am going to take it? the yeah. No, I'm going to take the dash action to move again because I, at this point I feel like I have to get in front of these murderers. <laughs> Good idea. Yep. <laughs> I picked the wrong team. <laughs> we're the good guys, right? You know, yeah, you know, a couple sessions ago when we were worried about whether or not we were actually doing the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> How's that yeah, going? Here we are. <laughs> are we the baddies? I would also nice. like to point out with the blue liquid. I mean, Ebron has flying ships. I'm sure they have porta potty liquid. I'm yeah, that's sure. it's, just, it's just airplane. <laughs> true, 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 yeah. True, true. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just continue going through uh, the top of the car, and I'll, I guess, uh, dash to meet up with the side of things, and uh, I'll, yeah, I'll just look over and just, everything all right inside? To, to Tikaros, because Tikaros is still outside. Oh yeah, the next one. I haven't, I haven't looked yet. Uh, and uh, with that, I will 
I'll be right behind you. And use that as a bardic inspiration to Kikaros. Awesome. Mm-hmm. For when she opens the door. All right. Mm-hmm. You know, this Eberron is a diesel punk D&D setting, so technically that could be gelatinous cube in the toilets. Just, out. Just saying. Mm. All right. Um, now that I've been gross, <laughs> Tikaros, you're up. Oh, I feel so inspired. I want to, okay, I will stealthily try to open the door um, ahead of us. Like I said, the door's open pretty quietly, so I think that's easy to do. Air the top off the train car. Oh. That's the DM's job. Mm. A justice would be uh, so proud of me. I never go fast. This feels weird. And you open it up, and it is a completely empty rail car. (gasps) Tolly, it's empty. I think. And I'll move forward into it. All right. Oh, this is like legitimately what's inside too? It's empty. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Got it. Just the middle floor. I will move a little further then. I'll move my full movement. Actually, I'm going to fly all the way to the end just because I can and it's cool. I'm going to (laughs) fly to the end of the next carriage. Just right. like winking back at Tolly. <laughs> I could barely see it. I'm still on the top of the card, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing it anyway. <laughs> That's Use it. your psychic link and tell him I'm winking. <laughs> yeah, I'm winking at you. I'm looking really cool. Oh, got it. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Adrastos. Well, Adrastos is frustrated and then. He appreciate he would normally appreciate Vara saying, "Hey, are you okay? Do you need help?" But in his rage, he's like, "No, I don't need help." And so he's gonna go reckless and attack this guy because that's right. a thing I can do now. Yep. Um. All right, twenty-two. That's a hit. Cool. For um, ten damage. Tell me how you dispose of this guy. All right. Um, so right as Vara says, need a hand, he just goes, nope, got it. And then he's just going to bull rush the guy against the wall and just skewer him into the door. Okay. All right. And then, so that was my action. So I'll just move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And as I'm running, how are the others? Did you? I heard you killed someone. That's awesome. We make I, a great team. <laughs> I assume after you skewer him, you pull back your your yeah. weapon from the door. At which point, he's just going to fall off. Everyone's doing fine. Oh, slam! I'm me. sorry. I'm yelling. I can't really tell if I'm yelling or not. The I... wind is really loud, and I'm raging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, all right. Is that it? Your movement? You're done? Uh, yeah, because I... Whoa. All my dice spilled. Sorry. Uh, yeah. That's right. it for me. Well, you did over damage the guy. I mean, you went way past his health. So I'm going to say that when you hit the door and slammed it, you actually pierced the door. And it would have made a loud noise anyway because you were slamming him into it. That's okay. Which is going to get the attention of the occupants. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and open the uh, the wagon because it doesn't know oh. if see it or not. Oh, hey, <laughs> heavy friends. <laughs> and uh, that is going to get the attention of those inside. They're going to react, and they are going to, uh, a couple of them are going to move forward. I assume you're changing your mind on not needing help. <laughs> and they are both going to draw out their stick devices, the cogs are going to whir, but instead of growing into that star-like thing, they they look more like, uh, they look kind of like the big uh, crossbow lava shooting things, but a smaller version of it. Your weapons are dumb! (laughs) Well, in that case, they're going to point them at you, Adrastos. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) And they're going to uh, 
fire them. So these rocks of molten lava are going to shoot out towards you. They're going to miss horribly and uh, land on a couple of crates uh, around you. And uh, they're the crates are going to begin smoldering as the uh, lava rocks uh, may catch them on fire. And then they're going to say, what are you doing on the street? How did you get here? But we're going to have to wait for your response because we're going to Hyrax. Hyrax is, uh, let's see. So this guy dropped a long sword, right? Yes. Uh, I'll let a dress just have that. I'll leave that there. Um, I will carry on uh, past Proto if I can. Excuse me. If I could get to the door. Uh, okay. Just, yeah, and you, he just kind of just like, <laughs> like he, just he's slip. solid metal, but he just, it, he acts like he's breathing in. So you like, he's getting yeah. thinner. So you can... <laughs> uh, does his best to slip by him and open the door and step out uh, to the next car. Okay. Um, and is going to try and open that just as quietly as he opened the last one. Well, that's the one that Tikaros is already in. Oh, Tikaros is already in there. Yeah, and did you close the door, Tikaros, or leave it open? Because you, no. you were waking to Ptolemaeus, so I assume it's open. Oh, yeah, Hyrax, you'll <laughs> see Tikaros, like, looking over her shoulder, trying to fly, like, real cool and doing this odd kind of wink. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just sort of nod acknowledgement to her, a little unsure of what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> um, as he, uh, let's see. Okay, how much <laughs> movement can I get out of this? So there's nothing in this card, right? Uh, no. Except a Tikaros. Right. Except a Tikaros. Tikaros isn't to nothing. No. I'll move, I'll move it as far as... Uh, Hold on, let me zoom out a little bit so I can see exactly where I would end up. Okay, so move the card here. down so people on the stream can see. There we go. I'll move one more space. That's all of my movement with a dash. Um, and yeah, that's exactly where I am for this turn uh, as I just continue advancing through the car. Z, Z just um, made a comment, and I love it. Now it makes me wish I would have made the doors open with a secret word, and the secret word is shh. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, all right, Hyrex, you're in the card. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, Vara. Sweet. All right. Um... How far away is this fool? Close enough. Uh, I'll go ahead and step up a little bit closer and get past all this bulky. Yeah, I'm gonna stuff. mark. The, I'm gonna mark the two crates that were hit, and uh, I see therefore that. maybe flaming. So I'm gonna let that flame just kind of happen around me for a second, because um, I assume there may be more to come, and. Mm -hmm. I'll just shoot off some some starry sparks. So I'll, I'll first do um, my starry form archer bonus action. I'm going to target just the dude right in the middle. That's a 25 to hit. That is a hit. Finally, good rolls happening. Heck yes. And that's nine radiant damage. Nine radiant. And then for my action. Um, the other guys, uh, do they look like they're going to walk forward at all? Which other guys? The other two guys in the train. Uh, in the very last I don't know that you. I don't know that you'd have a very good view of them. And if you wanted to do that, I think it would take your attention to do that. So that would be perception check on an action, I think, to try and discern what they're going to do. Okay, maybe what I'll do, that I'll hold an action then instead. Um, so I took my bonus action, and then I have this sick new spell. Um, I like that. 
called Watery Sphere. So if those other two dudes uh, walk up and all of them stand kind of within five feet of each other, then mm -hmm. I will cast Watery Sphere on them. Okay. Proto. I'm not exactly swift, so I'm just going to follow my, uh, my my friends here forward. Uh, let's see. Are they making... I, I doubt we can hear what's going in on, on uh, in that car that's behind us, correct? Or are they way that. loud? Fair. Okay, well, I, I'm watching uh, Hyrax just run forward into these cars, and so I'll do the same. I'll do the dash action, double my movement. Right. And I will stand next to him. Oh, All right. Ptolemaeus. Half of me is really like glad that I that there are people here because for some weird reason I was wondering since we skipped that last train, what if Prime was just in that last train and we walked all the way up <laughs> and we could have just found, you know, that would have been so uh, cool of me, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not out of the realm of possibility is what I'm thinking. Um, Not out of the realm of likelihood. Yeah. Uh, not not that you're main, just. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, it's, just, it's just par for the course. Yeah. For I think us. I'm just not knowing what is happening back there. I'm also going to just dash up. Okay. And continue forward with the rest of them. All right. Tikaros. Okay. This is great. We all ready for the next carriage? I look back. Let's do it. And I will move out and. Quietly open the next door of the next carriage. All right. And peek in. All right. Do I um, see any baddies? You can't see in the rooms, but uh, what you see in the main area is this appears to be someplace where they would be cooking food. Mm -hmm. Do I see any immediate threats? Uh, no, you do not. It appears to be empty. I step inside. Right. And I will, actually, I'll take the dodge action. I'm just going on defensive while I'm in here by myself, and that'll end my turn. All right. Adrastos. Okay. Adrastos is still full of beans and anger. So which, which of the ones did you hit with Starry for Vara? Uh, I hit the one in the center, and he took, I want to say, Great. a whopping nine damage. Yeah. Radiant well, damage. Yep. I'm going to introduce myself. Oh, well, okay. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, if, if I need to not, because I know you're, you've got the watery sphere, but I don't think Adrasos would know that you have a watery sphere. Like, Yeah, right? no, that, exactly. Yeah, I don't want to metagame it, so you wouldn't know. Okay. You're good. Go do All what right. you do. Well, I, I will. I will introduce myself. Um, I'm going to attack recklessly again. Okay. But for a different reason. I'm no longer frustrated. I am now in protection mode. Okay. You will not touch Vara. And they go, what's a Vara? Um, okay. That will be a 21. That is a hit. Or and I assume that that's on the red dot one, I assume. That is on the red dot one, yes. So okay. that is. I can't do math. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 14 damage. All right. You he's been pounded pretty good at this point. He looks pretty rough. Oh, no quit it, Ptolemaeus. I saw that. <laughs> uh miss. <laughs> Must find different phrase. Must oh, find you different know. phrase. <laughs> Uh, so that's I think it fits. 
Because either way, he's... Okay, anyway. And I'll pass my turn. All right. Actually, no, I won't. I won't. I'm I, sorry. I can't back up, so you're just we're just going to have to wait. That, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my bonus action and just roar and use my daunting roar ability. Okay. So they need to make wisdom saves. All right. What's my uh, DC? On the this? DC is 13. They both make it. Oh, well. Just. I tried. Just. Just. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, 13 and a 14 on the die, so. Well, at least I don't feel like a, a complete wasted turn. But now I'm passing the turn. All right. So the one that you've you've been pounding on um, is going to do whatever he does on his mace, and it's going to change back into that mace shape, and he's going to take a swing at you with it. And that is a 16, which I don't think is going to do a darn thing to you. The other one is going to uh, take a step back behind him. This is going to be your opportunity to attack if you would like. You're, You're muted. muted, my friend. I'm muted. I was saying I had a full okay. speech. If you don't want to attack reckless. him, that's fine. I'll just go on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I will attack. Uh, okay. oh, that is a natural 20. Nice. Oh, Lord. Well, he may not make a step forward. Um, okay, so. That is 18 damage. All right. Yes, you, you hit him hard enough that it actually launches him forward, even though he was stepping forward. So he just gets there a little faster and a little more painfully. And he uh, puts his hand to his mouth and says, Activate security, car seven. Irax, you're up. I have a really bad feeling about this. Security car seven. All right. Um, uh, well, I'm going to follow Tikaros. Okay. Let's see. Oh, seven would be. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, seven would be that one potentially. Okay. Um, so there's no one in this car either, as far as I can tell, except maybe in some of the side rooms, but we're not bothering with that. Uh, okay. Man, I guess I'm just going to keep moving. Uh, I guess I'm just going to keep dashing. Okay. Um, you know, I don't usually consider Hyrax a dashing type, but. Uh, the rest of us do, I assure you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm. So I'm toward the end of this car, just keeping on, keeping on. Not much else to do right now. That's my turn. All right, Vara. Okay. Um. Let's see. Well, for sure, I'm gonna do another bolt at that man because it worked well last time my little archer bolt that is a oh nope didn't work well this time that's a 10 to hit yeah that's a miss does not hit so i go okay let's try the bigger one and i'll do what's what's his current what does he look like right now is he uh, he's talking about little, the one in front is he he looks a little messed up a little messed up. He looks like he's been wailed on. Right. Okay, then I'll just go first level again. Guiding bolt. This one should hit 23. That's a hit. This man takes 17 radiant damage. And Woo. he crumbles to the ground. Sick. Radiantly. Uh Radiantly. And Damn. I will move up closer to Adrestus. Um, yes, Adrestus. Did you attack me with advantage last turn? Uh, no. Okay, because I was I was reckless. That's true. Didn't okay. Matter. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> as far as as far as that roll was, I don't care. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> if he can't hit with that, okay. Anyway, <laughs> well, 
Uh, just before I move to the next one, because uh, it's kind of a layer action here, so a klaxon sounds, an alarm that echoes throughout the chain. And uh, those people who are in car seven, which would be Ptolemaeus and Proto, I need a constitution saving throw from you as the entire car yeah. fills with lightning. Whoa. Yeah, I was worried about that. <laughs> how, how does that how does that help with security Oof. on the entire you know, it's fine. <laughs> Just that uh Am I am I ten feet from Yes I am. Okay, cool. Constitution, huh? Wow. That's gonna be a twenty two. Alright. That's gonna be a nineteen. Oh well both of you succeeded, which is great. Nice. How much so damage in that do we case, take? You are only going to take seven lightning damage, so not that much. Because oh, okay. okay. I rolled poorly. <laughs> okay. And it was a lot of dice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, that's a jangle. So, you know, sometimes you win some, sometimes you, you know. <laughs> it's because you let us sleep. Shouldn't have let us sleep. <laughs> no, I'm glad with it. I'm glad with it. Yeah. <laughs> and this. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to say anything about the comment about why would you have one car, car seven that's like this? You'll figure that out yourselves later. Proto, you're up. <clears throat> so uh, I'll turn to Tully first. And are you okay? I'm fine. Let's just keep going. I will catch him. And since I saw Hyrax run straight ahead, um, I will be barreling i'm just gonna take the dash action now and i'm just gonna all 310 pounds is me is just gonna be clamming <laughs> as i just charge and run <laughs> right up behind them all right what's your movement speed uh 30 oh, okay let me get a yeah do some math here make sure i move to the right spot Okay. Oh, damn. My hands up. There we go. Yep. And when I move there, uh, when I finally do stop, which basically sounds like, I guess, a giant weight slamming on the ground, <laughs> I'll just call out to, to Hyrex, uh, I'll watch your back. <laughs> I just imagine the last 10 feet of your movement being you like Healy slamming on brakes. <laughs> he, just... he turns around startled hearing him coming up. And, and when he says this, just like, Glad to hear it. Thank you. And I will prepare my shield and <laughs> end my turn. All right, Ptolemaeus. I think I might I might be doing what is a absolute cardinal sin in D and D right now. Because because you know do it. He cares. He cares a lot about his friend. He cares a lot, a lot about his family. And two members hasn't shown their faces in a while. So, despite this being the security car seven that just shocked the crap out of him, I think I'm gonna actually just move backwards to find find Vara and Adrastos, and effectively splitting the party three by three. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I will dash back into this car. All right. Um. With that as well, I would like to check. Since I have now having my invocations, I have a hundred and twenty feet of of yes. devil like sight mm -hmm. i'm within feet uh kind of the distance of seeing what is happening on the other side and i i notice yeah he's he's actually within within sight i notice like yep. what's happening with them uh and there being extra guards i'm not gonna shout because i'm pretty sure they can't hear me but i i think <laughs> i'm going to continue forward that way you're gonna bring in his long sword uh, I don't know. Let's see. 
Let's see if I re totally remember that. The guy never even got to use his long sword. I mean, you know. I'm gonna exactly. wait across it's practically, the, it's in practically the new condition. Over. <laughs> Except for all the blood that's like splattered on top of it already, right? Oh, Adrastos doesn't care about that. <laughs> He'll love it. <laughs> Gives it character. All right, Dikaros. Oh, it's me. I do not in the cleaner bathroom. Oh, yeah. We gotta get out of here. I elegantly go, ew, what? why did I go in there? Oh, that one's I'm all boxes, to... so it's the other side that's the bathroom. Oh, yeah, Never that's mind. right. <laughs> so I was in some boxes. Oh, I look at the boxes, kind of wanting to go through them and go, no, Prime. <laughs> and I will elegantly fly forward. And as I do, I'm going to land. I want, well, yeah, I'll kind of flatten and kind of superwoman style past Proto to land in between Hyrax and Proto. All right. And as I do, I'm going to do my fancy cloak of stars. So Proto would see it. Um, as Tikaros lands in front of him, like a starry kind of shroud just covers her entirely as she kind of touches down to the ground in front of you. And in your head, Proto, you hear, I'm so glad you're here, Proto. We're going to be okay. I will say he does lower his shield from the defensive stance. Is just kind of like, <laughs> just looking at like, oh, what is this? And I'll does, it look hand... like, does it look like Tikaros? Oh. Are the stars at night big and bright? Oh. Come on, Texans. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, you got to help me out on that one. I'm lost. Deep yeah, I, in the heart oh, of Texas. I was like, I'm not from here. So, <laughs> Tikaros. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Tikaros, right. this, this, still looks, this still looks completely like you, though, except this different form. Okay, yeah. good. Then, yeah, then he's definitely like, oh, wow. And definitely wide eyed and like kind of his mouth's not dropped open, but it's kind of this like weird, awkward, like partially open. Yay. And Hyrax, just on your back, if I have a couple more seconds, I would just place my hand on your back. And in your head, you'll just hear, I don't get a chance to tell you very much, Hyrax. I'm so glad you're here. And I'll just get ready for our next advance. Smile back at her. I guess he heard it in his head, so it'd be rude to respond to it out loud. <laughs> um, Adrastos. Um, okay. I'm just going to walk over the corpse of his friend and <laughs> stab this gentleman, but I'm not going to do it recklessly. You're going to my bravely stab rage, him in the back. My rage is going to focus, and I'm going to use a fainting attack. Okay. Still raging, but not with recklessness. And that is another natural 20. I'm pretty sure he's dead, but let's go ahead and go through the motions. Well, <laughs> before, before I roll anything, it's 20 damage. He's dead. Okay. <laughs> Give us your dice. <laughs> yeah. It's because I yelled. That's the Franken dice. It's because I yelled at it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're um, we're going we're gonna to have those drop tested in a, uh, some dish soap water there now. <laughs> well, they, they're also the ones that rolled two nat ones in a row. So <laughs> never mind. Um, Keep your dice. <laughs> um, so with that, just I'll just like. <clears throat> drop down kind of like um blood sport style just drop down and just javelin up under the chin pull the javelin out turn to Vara. we should catch up with the others and move agreed all right okay that is my movement so the first thing that's going to happen is this guy here in the back is going to run forward close the door and uh, give me a perception check, uh, Vara and Adrasto, since you're the closest. 16? I, I swear. I, I swear, Tam, I'm not doing this on purpose. That is another natural 20. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. You hear as he shuts the door, car seven, full power, constant. 
Car seven full power. I don't know what that means, but it can't be good. Probably has to do with car seven. I don't know how many cars there would. Would I have? Um, would we have been able to see and count how many cars are in the train as we were approaching, or is that a far fetched? Uh, that's up to you. I mean, I put the map up so that you could look at it. So I'm perfectly fine with if you did or didn't. Okay. But, uh, you know. Yeah, I feel like, no, Vara was star charting. Nope, she wouldn't know. <laughs> All right. The doors on either side of Hyrax open. Ruh -roh. And I wish they wouldn't. <laughs> Could Sorry. they not? Sorry about How this. How about no? <laughs> no. To uh, one side opens and a person carrying what looks like a makeshift shield. It's it's more like the lid off of a cooking pot. Uh, but he does have a nice spear in his hand. Uh, very mm. sharp looking. And mm. uh, he jabby jabby jabbies at you. Oh, uh, well. But he is not going do. to do a very good job at it because I seriously doubt an 11 hits. No. On the other side, uh, a guy carrying a longsword, very similar to the longsword you saw in the previous one. And he takes it, and as he raises it to swing it, he, <clears throat> you hear as these motor-type sounds start happening, and it looks like there's a chain or something around the outside of the blade that begins whirring very quickly. Whoa! He has a chain sword? I'd rather he didn't. Oh. And uh, he takes two slashes at you. The first one misses horribly. Matter of fact, it was so bad that dice is going away. It threw the dice back at me. I'm scared now. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one's going to be a 15, which I think is probably a miss. Nope. Right? Oh, yep. that's a hit? No, awesome. no, it does not hit. It does not hit. No, no, no. It's oh, a okay. miss. <laughs> I was going to say, I can't imagine that would hit you. <laughs> I got to be right. honest, as much as Adrastos wants the longsword, it kind of wants the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> Are they not both the same thing? Yeah, one's a chainsword. <laughs> I mean, we, we've never seen the other one use the sword. That's that fair. Could never, still you be... haven't even looked at No one picked it up. Yeah, I'm so... headed that way. <laughs> I'm about to pick it up, so I'm just saying. <laughs> Meanwhile, the doors behind Hyrax, or farther up the cart than Hyrax, also open. And out steps another gentleman with a long sword. Who is going to come oh in boy. and again attacky attacky with it? I I wish he would not, but <laughs> till it goes. I I'm so sorry. Uh, that is a sixteen. Nope. And a ten. These guys have really great swords with chains in them, but they can't hit crap. Wait, they um, all have chainsaw swords? You're on a very special train, my friends. Probably probably leaves a nasty mark on my shield, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure shield. it does as it scrapes along. The other guy's going to step out, but he does not have an angle on you to do anything at the moment. Uh, Proto, the doors on either side of you are going to open. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's so many baddies. And maybe they be like two people who are like, oh, no, we're on the wrong car, and they run away. Did, did you wonder why? Try. There was nobody out in this cart. They all had to be somewhere. So they both have jabby jabby. So they're going to jabby jabby at you. And the first one is going to be a six, which I think probably doesn't. No, hit. I don't think that's going to hit. Uh, the next one's a 22. Uh, I have an AC of 22 right now. I did shield. <sighs> that really sucks. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> I'm loving it, yeah. No, I'm, I'm have very happy with this result. Meanwhile, the klaxon is sounding continually. And let's see, I think that's going to be it for what you can know is happening at the moment. So Hyrax, you're up. Okay, so Hyrax is going to quick bonus action cast Hunter's Mark on this fellow okay. uh, to my east. Um... Uh, and I'm going to focus on him first to try and keep uh, this guy from getting a flanking bonus on me. Um, and because he doesn't have a shield, so I feel like he's easier to hit. We'll see if that's true. 
Um, I'm gonna jab at him with my javelin. All right. Once and twice. Let me just roll them both. This one and this one. Okay. So one of those is a 14 to hit. Oh, no, 15. 15 to hit. All right. 15 hits. Okay. Uh, and that one is four plus. Uh, it's not thrown, so it's four plus three. Okay. So it's seven. Uh, and then his mark damage is another five. So that's 12 piercing damage. Okay. And the other one is a 25 to hit. Goodness, that's a hit. Um, with uh, nine piercing damage. So okay. total 21 to... piercing damage on this guy okay. at all. And both Thank of these you. are against the same guy. Okay. All right. He does not look in good shape. <laughs> that's great, but I need him to be in dead shape. Uh, pretty quickly because I've got other people to move on to. Um, <laughs> Excuse me, could you could you hurry to. and die, please? <laughs> right. All um, right. Yep. Uh, that'll. That's that's my turn. That's all I got. All she wrote. I am going to go back to Vara. Way back here in the back of the train. All right. All righty. Um, is there a way for me to detach train cars? Maybe. Cool. I'm going to, oh, pardon me, excuse me, corpses. I'm going to walk out to this little couple over here. Okay. Um, and as I walk, I'll just go, um, address this one moment. And, uh... Give me an investigation check, and let's see yeah. if we can figure out how to do this. Let's see. Ha, three. Um, it, it's very odd. You don't see anything physically connecting them, but you can't figure out, therefore, how to detach it. Oh, dang. Um, what if I just hit it real hard? <laughs> Always a chance. Yeah, because I have because I have the bonus action for starry form, I'll go ahead and just hit it. Okay. Um that's a 16 to hit. That's an absolute hit. Cool. And that's 10 radiant damage. Okay. Take that train. It it's it shudders a little bit, but that's not enough. Okay. Well, I've got another action, so I'm gonna I'm gonna waste a spell on this. <laughs> I'll do a I'll do a guiding bolt at it. Okay. It's already weakened. Why not? That's a fifteen to hit. That's a hit. Excellent. That's thirteen damage radiant. There's a shudder, and then suddenly that cart turns upside down and falls to the ground. And hits, right. with quite a, hits with quite a kaboom. Woof. Yikes. Anyways, um, 15, 20, 25. Cool. And then I step back into the car, obviously. Uh, and I go, all right, coming. <laughs> and that's my turn. All right. Whoops. Grab the wrong thing there. Let go. I hope it didn't move everything. I was trying to get rid of the car, but it doesn't want to let go. So, Goodness, I truly just uh, decided I would be a terrible person on this yeah, train. You chose violence. <laughs> I we did. did. We don't Meanwhile. want to kill anybody. Yeah. Earlier, earlier, is it really necessary for us to kill everybody, Hyrax? Uh, Later. Uh, never been prouder. 
blasted people. <laughs> All right, uh, Proto, you're up. Okay, so having the two people on my side, um, given that my right is my uh, my hammer hand, I will. Uh, for some reason, I'm looking the wrong direction. Hearing uh, was Hyrex. Were you hit at all or no? I have not yet been hit. But I did hear screeching of something against your shield. Against my shield. You... Yep, yep, yep. Um, uh, I will take my hammer, swing it wide, and come down on this uh, fine gentleman right here. Uh, okay, let's see. That's nine plus... Plus, so oh, 16. That's a hit. All right. Let me roll. Uh, I'm just going to do my uh, second attack because I know there's no way in hell the first one's actually going to kill him. Uh, so I will attack a second time. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a nat 20. All right. Uh, See, what is your guys' mate? No, yeah, I know. Uh, what is the uh, the nat 20 rule? Is it Was it max damage max plus damage you roll it again? Plus roll. Okay, so... So it'll be 12. Okay. 12, 7. Sorry, my son stole my dice, so I'm trying to pull them back from where he put them. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Three. So that's going to be um, an additional 10. Okay. And then let me roll these again. It's going to be two uh, additional 8. So what's our total on that? Because I didn't catch all your numbers. 10, 8, so that's 18, 18. Um, and then a 12. So 30. He did. Okay, um, I guess as the hammer, I, I will say, on my second hit, I am hitting to incapacitate, knock unconscious. I am not trying to kill these men. You have to declare that before. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, then he is quite dead. I will say He's that dead. I... <laughs> I, yeah, I hit him in the head thinking I would bonk him, and I probably crushed his skull. <laughs> I'm sorry, which one was it? Because I'm so laughing too hard now. Was it the left or right guy? Uh, it's this one here That's on the left. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. And then, yeah. being done with that, I'm going to turn wide, pointing my hammer at everybody, including and then ending at the one on my right, and say, don't touch my friends. <laughs> Very good. And then I'm going to end with the oozing mess on my left, hopefully not getting on my shoe. <laughs> Roll for Dexter. No, I'm joking. All right, Ptolemaeus. <laughs> Speaking of oozing mess, uh, standing in front of me, um, do I hear anything from the, from the train car behind me? The, the aforementioned security car 7? Give me a perception check. Perfect. I would like to see. 11? It, there's a hum, but it's very light. It could just be the wind. It's hard to tell. Okay, but but there is definitely kind of like, it, maybe that's something? Okay. Maybe. Um, I will just very casually pick up the longsword as I go past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, totally not inspecting it whatsoever. Um, let, me, let me actually do this move correctly. Uh, it's just an object interaction right that's not yeah, actually going yeah to be you're just going to be scooping it up it's he's definitely not holding on to it okay so yeah there's what's holding on to it um i'm going to step on to this uh spot open the door the doors open and stuff and i'll lift the the sword out to address those but at the same time just kind of shout out the way forward's potentially blocked can you call the ship back and uh, that'll be my turn, I suppose. All right. Icarus. Eek. I'm peering around Hyrax, and I can see these two sword swing and chain people in front of him. I learned my lesson. Are they wearing that fireproof armor that stuffed me up last time? Give me a perception check. Ah, uh, yes. That's a great big nine. You're not sure because you don't have a very clear view. Oh. Ah, 
I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to channel a bit of extra energy from a sorcery point and just shoot out two firebolts at each of these. So oh, one at each right, or left direct right? one at each. It has to be. So these two directly. Oh, those two. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you meant. I'm going for I'm them. Uh, you meant the two on the side. Okay. Got you. Got you. Yep. I'm going to go for them. So topmost one first. Oh, that's great. 18 plus seven to hit on the top one. Oh, that's a hit. He takes a great big 12 points of fire damage. Okay. And then this guy's next, closely behind. That's a natural one. You, I was you, so excited by the first hit. Tikaros, you you know, you know I like you, right? You know, you know. <laughs> but I'm afraid. So it, it disperses, right? I, I see that. We see that happen. Yeah, he take it. It disperses. It doesn't disperse as well as it did on that first one. Uh, he does appear to take some visible damage, uh, but definitely uh, not anything close to what you were. Uh, to be oh. fair, how many seconds did Tikaros actually see the guy before he got he got turned into red mist? So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, like... yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's it. Well, as we make our way back to Adrastos, before you take your full action, uh, I'm going to say we're at our time. So I think what we're going to do is stop here and we will pick up next time.